Okay, right. Let us begin. Swagged out every day and night. I like to shoot my gun because I don't like to fight. <laughs> <laughs> Great video there. <laughs> <laughs> what a music! What a music video. Did you watch that one? I uh, yeah, I watched it the whole way through. Oh my god. There's just something <laughs> magical about stitches. <laughs> okay. I was gonna briefly check the audio uh, on the okay. screen. Okay. Sure. And then begin. <laughs> oh, Ayla Mao. Yeah. Oh, you may be a mod in your stream. Great. I can yeah, I know. It. I love you, man. You deserve to be a moderino. I should really turn my Twitch on as well, in case people have questions, so I don't have okay. to make you guys read them to me. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's happy to see you, it looks like, Nemesis. <laughs> yeah, and I cannot see that. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Hold on, Guild Wars Doom. Mm -hmm. And then Mighty Teapot. It's probably the last stream, because no one's watching. Great. <laughs> <laughs> well, how many people do we have? Oh, it doesn't show a viewer count right now for me. Oh, yeah, it takes ages. Ma okay. What's your stream name? Ma I'm searching for Mighty. Oh, I'll I'll link it. Hold on one second. Let me be, <laughs> let me put it in Skype. There's a lot of streamers. I didn't even realize how many streamers. I put a link in Skype. And make sure to viewers. make sure to minimize yeah. that uh, chat bar in Skype to. Because that will like mess up all of your windows. <laughs> okay, I think the audio is pretty good. Okay, commercial. Uh, so, <laughs> 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 okay. yep, time to run a commercial. Ski so, uh, Mogram, I'm sorry, man, but um, I can't really do anything about the buffering issues because. Um, I don't have access to the Twitch quality things yet, and as a result of that, I mean, I've just got it at the middle ground at 720p, and I can't really, um, I can't help you there, buddy. So yeah, I think I'll already... yeah. I usually stream in like 184p. <laughs> it's it's really 184p. It's a, <laughs> it's a strange a resolution. <laughs> Oh, apparently a lot of people are saying the buffering's bad. Uh oh. Bad. I... It may even out in a minute or two. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Invite Nemesis Let's... to DNT. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Actually, we don't. Right. We can't even play together. Uh, yeah, you're TV. on EU, aren't you? Yeah, I'm from yeah. EU. I can't. Oh. We all have to. Well. Yeah. Oh, we could buy you an account. Buy you another account. <laughs> Come on, NA. Yeah, and I have to play. Join the NA. <laughs> I have to play. I have to be able to play with you guys. <clears throat> okay. So All right then. We're let ready us to start. let us begin. Hello and welcome, chaps, to a discussion on Reapers. We have a s special guest with us, uh, Nemesis. So, welcome to the show, my friend. And how about you start, it off, start us off by just giving some general, general thoughts on how the Reaper is going to help Necromancers out? Well, the first thing I want to say, the first thing I always wanted to say, uh, this is the first time I actually saw the person that was behind the Necromancer. And uh, I don't know his name, Robert something, the Asian guy? Robert G. Well, yeah. uh, the way he was phasing in and out of his own mind discussing things he was really like on top of things and uh, people that know me and even you guys know that I was always <clears throat> uh, I was always bragging the build system so I want to give a shout out to Robert th guy because uh, most most of the time people I mean they don't get enough appreciation for the work they're doing so that's really really something <coughs> uh, second thing uh, before we begin, it's important, from my opinion, it's important that people understand that we don't know the full story. Uh, not even half. We see the build system, but we don't, uh, we don't know how the PvE system is going to interact with the new build system. And we also don't know the items and runes and stuff like that. Because a lot of the uh, traits disappeared from passives. 
and we don't know how that's going to get integrated into the, the items or if it's going to get integrated because we also now use three trait paths instead of two so uh, we can talk uh, about how much we know so far but it's still um, the end game is going to be really different, could be really different because it's like we get a condition, we get a skill that does a million condition damage and all the monsters are, have condition immunity, so we did nothing. So, yeah, that's uh, the introduction for me. Okay. Well, uh, Inks, what do you think of uh, Reapers just as a whole, as a, in a general idea? Um... <laughs> You know, like like Nemesis was saying, I, for PVE anyway, like Nemesis was saying, we don't know what Heart of Thorns has in store for us just yet. We don't know how those encounters are going to interact. We don't know how, uh, you know, challenging content, we don't even know what that is yet. Um, all we know is it's not the Wyvern fight. You know, other than that, we don't really know what that is. I think we can speculate a bit that ArenaNet is walking away from dungeons at this point. Uh, or at least they're not focusing on it for the next year or so. And I think Fractals is going to be their new uh, focus point over dungeons. Like, I think Fractals are going to continue to develop over dungeons, unfortunately. Uh, so, you know, you have to ask yourself how, you know, how are builds different in Fractals than they are in dungeons? Because they're not exactly the same. It's not a one-to-one -one ratio there. In structured PvP and in World v. World, uh, I think Necros are... I mean, in World v. World, Necros are already pretty decent or strong. Uh, it's certainly in, like, Zerg play, they're going to get even stronger with the Reaper. I feel like it's going to... You're going to be able to change the way that you currently play. Like, my Power Well Necro is going to be even stronger. And I'm going to have access to... I'm going to have more staying power uh, than I currently do. Position is going to still be important, but... I don't have to sit at the side of the battle. I can I can get in there a little more. I think, and uh, structured PvP. I don't know. I, I think that you know at, at high level structured PvP, power necros or necros in general just don't currently have a place in the meta uh, for conquest anyway. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe they have still have a place there. Reaper. I'm a little concerned because they're it feels like they're one on one capabilities. And this is just looking at it in a bubble, right? We, you know, mixing with the other core specializations is going to change. But, uh, yeah, they, they could have a place. I think they could have a place in, uh, in a higher level of structured PvP. That, me that whole meta is going to change anyway, so. At an alarming rate. <laughs> at an alarming <laughs> rate, yeah, yeah. It's very true. All right, then, but, Brazil, you know, round us off. I think it's going to be a lot. I think it's going to be fun, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the changes to Blood Magic as well, because that's going to be a big. Mm. Depending on what happens there, that's going to be big. Well, yeah. I think. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, were you gonna? If you want to say something in reply to that real fast, go for it. Oh, yeah, I was going to say that's definitely something. Maybe we should even talk about right now. I mean, the lack of uh, supporting shouts. It's still mostly offensive and they don't they don't really help your team out a whole bunch yeah i, uh, I think to it's talk about yeah. that i prepare something when we get to it i don't know if we are there yet mm. oh well i mean i you know, we could go there right now i mean yeah. do you do you think fine. that um, uh, i i got a lot of feedback a lot of people send me emails and a lot of people said why aren't you upset about the fact that we didn't get any uh, offensive buffs like something to help the team especially for PV. And I kept uh, telling people more or less that uh, if we get more proper PV, I especially remember in the beginning when they were talking a lot about the mechanics of Guild Wars 2, the, I don't know his name, Colin, Colin guy. He said especially that um, they created this entire build system, an entire world to have more dynamic fights. That's why buffs didn't take, you don't have buffs that have a duration of 30 minutes. They didn't want people to stop and rebuff. And contrary to what they originally wanted, that's exactly what's happening. And it's even worse because you have to keep rebuffing because the buffs are so short you cannot do them on the fly to get the full benefit. They were supposed to be done on the fly. Like when you're fighting, you get a bit of debuffing, a bit of buffing, and it's real dynamic and really engaging and really fun. Well, that's not happening because of the way PV is right now. 
But if you get more challenging PV and stacking loses its effectiveness, we can buff on the fly and we can debuff on the fly. And I always say the Necromancer doesn't need to get like more mobility to be turned into a second elementalist or more blocks to be turned into a second guardian. It has to be equivalent. If we are all elementalists, then we don't have balance. This is just one class. Balance is when you have diversity. So the fact that <coughs> we didn't get any offensive buffs, uh, we got debuffs, so it evens it out. And we can only speculate that the PV system is going to be the second half, like the yang to the yin. So I'm, I mean, I'm speculating and I'm hoping that that's going to be the case. I'm not sure because they failed the first time. But who knows? <laughs> so I yeah. mean, would you? Do you think that some changes to blood magic, possibly interacting with the shouts, could possibly give them a more supporty side thing? As we know, blood magic is going to be, well, they, you know, they're re redesigning it considerably. Uh, do you think that's going to yeah, make it and it's Necromancers really a bit more friendly? Because I remember Robert guy said something about Reaper and doing spamming Death Shroud AOE skill and combining it with the trait that now gives healing on Life Blast so you can heal your party. And I'm like, yeah, that's really cool. And I was looking through the new build system and I don't see the trait anymore. I'm like, why did he mention healing and doing AOE healing and stuff when the trait is gone? So I'm not sure uh, the, the misinformation, but it could be there. Like some sort of playstyle when you're symphoning from the enemies uh, into your group. Like you're the siphon, the, the middle ground between enemies mm. and your group. That would be, again, something we never seen before in MMOs. Not even in single players. So that's, it could be, it could be done. I'm not sure, but... Okay. Right, in that case, shall we move on to the Reaper itself? Should we talk about some greatsword skills? So, the auto attack. I think this is a very, very interesting, interesting auto attack. Uh, the fact that it's really slow, uh, but also it inflicts a disgusting amount of chill on the, the third swing. I think it means that I re um, the <sighs> Reapers are going to be very sticky. Very, yeah. very sticky. Uh, you know, if you allow them to get close to you and get that third attack off, it's, uh, they, they have easily enough time to hit you another uh, three times to reapply that. Uh, and I think that's a really interesting way, because instead of just giving them gap closes, oh yeah, boring, 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 they've, m men they've designed it in such a way that you, you, instead of giving the Necromancer more mobility, you limit the mobility uh, of your opponents instead, and I think that's a good way of uh, going, going about that. What do you guys think about that? I think it's really cool. Like, uh, I think the trait, I think it's called Chilling Darkness, too. Whenever you blind, it applies chill. And then you have your spinal shivers and traits. And you could, like, Great Sword with spinal shivers is hilarious because you can just, like, executioner somebody down to 50%. And then it triggers the spinal shivers and it takes boons off. And then it chills them again. And I think, I think like you said, I think it's really cool. And I think the idea of, like, not necessarily having gap closes, well, I guess you kind of do because the Necrocopter Death Shroud, the number two, that spins and it chases after the person. I think that's cool, too. So you can, like, I don't know. It just it seems really awesome in the chill and being able to blind. In PvE situations, I guess, if you, I think it was Greatsword number four, the one that brings down the cloud and, like, the ground gets dark and blind pulses mm. and stuff, uh, if you can also apply chill on like trash mobs and enemies uh, and chill them as well while you're blinding them, I think that's incredibly useful. I think that's, it could potentially be better than like maybe just a thief blinding or maybe like a sandstorm on an elementalist, something like that. I think that's a really interesting kind of wild card that got thrown in a little bit. I think that's, that's pretty fun. But uh I haven't really compared it to Ranger's Greatsword yet, for whatever reason I forgot that, even though I use a, a, a Greatsword on my Ranger. But my concern here is that it has the speed of, like, a Guardian's Hammer, the weapon itself, right? And in the case of uh, Reaper, Greatsword versus Warrior, it does more damage, it's a little bit slower, makes sense. However, Guardian's Greatsword is faster and does more damage, and... 
<clears throat> you know, I know the numbers aren't final yet, but, uh, you know, I hope they take a little bit of look at that. Yes, you know, I know, I know that the last hit pr provides chill, and there's traits where, you know, then chill does more damage, and, you know, there's all that kind of synergy that goes along with it. So maybe, you know, maybe in actual play we'll find out that that's okay. But it has me a little concerned that Guardian Great sort attacks faster and does more damage than the Necros win. It feels like, you know, at least what they're telling us is that, hey, this is a slower weapon, but don't worry about it because it's going to do more damage. I feel like the damage numbers are a bit off on the Necro Great Sword just yet for the just for the basic attack anyway. Well, do we? It looked like they were probably using a soldier's amulet because they weren't critting. Very often, that's that would be yeah. my guess. I can't imagine it was like a Sentinel's amulet because that'd be weird. But from just remembering the auto attack, I think it was oh, was it around like eight hundred, seven eight hundred per hit. I, I mean, I don't, I don't, and that's probably subject to change. And I don't think it's going to really. It'll obviously be a lot different whenever we have gear and everything finalized, but right, yeah, I'm just talking about like yeah. the base, uh, the base attacks mm. for for the sword, like the base numbers, yeah, not yeah. It might what it's be, altered by anything. It might be we have a four second chill, but we don't know the runes. It, uh, yeah. with like eighty mm. percent chill duration, you can get like a six second chill, and the auto attack is not about damage; it's about chilling. It's, yeah, it's complicated. It all depends on the runes and the items. I think a lot of the damage will be from execution or two. Yeah, uh, I, I think that'll that'll definitely be where the probably the majority of greatsword damage comes from. Yeah, the entire reaper, the entire reaper specialization specialization is to me is like a very fancy executioner, AOE execution, single target execution. You set up a kill and you go, you're like the guy in the meta, you will have the role as a reaper in PvP, you will have the role to finish guys off. You have, uh, you said about you being really sticky with the chill and stuff, but you also have relentless pursuit, which is an adept trait, like really easy to get. I mean, you're going to get it anyway because of the new changes. Anyway, you get a 60% reduction to immobilize. Mm -hmm. So that's something like not many classes have. So you go after people, it's the playstyle is really enjoyable. You know you're going to get him, like slowly, but you know you're going to get him. And when you get him, you execute. And that's a very unique playstyle that hasn't been uh, in general in MMOs, but in Guild Wars 2 definitely wasn't. I mean, you can execute people with Thief, but Thief is squishy and stealthy and stuff like that. You don't have that executional. I think it'll be cool too, just another thing. Uh, I don't know how often, I guess I might, like it, just in a PvP situation, I could imagine starting off a fight with Greatsword and getting your chill duration like on the target and then going into Death Shroud and auto attacking and the Death Shroud auto attack uh, with, from the Reaper is quite a bit faster than the Life Blast <coughs> that the classic Necromancer has. So if you have your Life Blast Grant's Might, I think that's called Reaper's Might, um, you'll be able to build up Might stacks really, really quickly, especially, I think, if you're probably hitting multiple targets. Uh, and then, whenever you get your target below 50% health, you can toggle Death Shroud off, go onto your Greatsword, and then just constantly Executioner while still having Might built up from your Death Shroud. So that'll be... I think that'll be, like, honestly pretty ridiculous... Especially if you have something like strength runes, or even if you play like if you play a more defensive like with holebreak runes for even more like minus condition duration with the uh, relentless pursuit trait, I think it was. You'll have like there's there will be like no like mobility impeding conditions on you at all. You'll just you'll be immune to like chill and cripple and yeah. immobilize and stuff. And, and you'll have might duration. It yeah. solves yeah. the issue with of, uh, with mobility. There are far more mobile classes, but they can be slowed down. You're not that mobile, mm. but you cannot be slowed down, so it evens the odds in a very... Mm. Not in the yeah. same way. Like I said, we're not supposed to be the same as a guardian or an elementalist or thief or something. Yeah, yeah I, th I think that... Um, the, the fact that it's not symmetrical, I think I consider that to be good design rather than bad design, because... Like you were saying at the beginning, if everyone's just got the same stuff, then what's the point in, in having uh, having professions, really? You know, it's, it's 
If everyone does the same, that's, that's no fun. No fun at all. Okay, so shall we talk about Grave Digger, which is a huge swing, and you spin around, and if you hit them on low, it recharges 100% faster. Yeah, so strong. just spam the hell out of it. That's, yeah. that's, it's yeah. dead. That, I want to say right now, that's OP. That's OP. There's yeah. no way. There's no way, especially considering uh, I'm not going to use the Elite on a build I'm going to use with Reaper, the new Elite that freezes people. I'm going to reserve that for a support build. And recently I developed this support power build. I keep saying I'm, I'll do it. And it's basically, he's like... Uh, exactly like a support in uh, League of Legends. Like he's setting up the kills. And if you freeze five people with that, and you get, you freeze them exactly when they're really low, I can, with, a, with Grave Digger, I can literally kill five people. I mean, if they don't escape in three or four seconds, but still, four seconds to wipe four people, you have the damn, you have the theoretical potential to actually do that. And, wow. People are going to rage. <laughs> when they clamp up and they don't know how to disengage at the same time, they'll go like, ah, he killed all of us. You should have disengaged. <laughs> you mentioned League of Legends, and now I'm like thinking of Trindamir with his like chicken slow and spinning around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. I, I think Necromancer is going to be like really Reaper, I guess. I think it's going to be really, really hilarious and like unranked and maybe lower ranked, ranked and like hot oh, joins. Geez, You'll just yeah, be able the, to just just farm people. Like they, the rage is going to yeah. be real. They I mean, they already complain. Get away. Yeah. <laughs> in, in lower ranks, you'll 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 hear people say how OP Necro is, and they yeah. can't deal with Minion Mancer. They can't deal with. It's just like when Spirit Ranger or even <clears throat> even Mesmer's when you get too many clones out. People at lower ranks. Uh, and, and I don't mean to, you know, disparage people who play in the lower ranks, but the lower ranked uh, PvP players have a hard time dealing with multiple targets, trying to, you know, deal with this. They get overwhelmed, you know, and, and necromancers with like, you know, with this number two skill cleaving you down, and just, you know, there's, there's gonna, they're gonna be like, they need to, you know, nerf them, nerf them, nerf them, and they're gonna cry out for sure. Yeah. Especially if you're really, at fifty percent health and he cleaves you down and you're like instantly dead and you're like, What the hell just happened to me? You know. Yeah. Really important to note from, from the chat is the fact that if you have if you somehow some your opponent manages to chill you, uh, it will not recharge uh, the recharge will be affected by that chill, so you will no longer get a hundred percent recharge reduction. I think that's I think that's at least worth the note. Okay. But either way, very, very powerful Powerful skill. I think we all expect this to be toned down a little bit. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to Death Spiral, which is you conjure a drill of energy and do six little bits of damage and 12 stacks of vulnerability and also generate life force. Uh, this is, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but 12 stacks of vulnerability is, is pretty strong considering it's already got permanent uptime without even any condition, well, you know, roughly permanent uptime without any condition duration. And also, vulnerability synergizes very well with, uh, with, with the Reaper's toolkit, with the, uh, what's, what's it called? Defenses. The thing that gives, yeah, yeah, decimate defenses, yeah. which uh, grants a ridiculous amount of critical, uh, critical strike chance uh, based on the amount of vulnerability that your opponents have. So. Thoughts on Death Spiral, guys? Well, I think the initiator, <laughs> basically. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. if you're going to initiate with Chill, maybe you, uh, you use a utility for Chill, but it's defi definitely the second one. You use that ahead to boost your damage, debuff them, buff yourself, and then wreck them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brazil? Well, making Gravedigger do an extra 12% damage is... <laughs> I don't think there's much else to say. It's, 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 just gonna, it's just cool. I like it. Yeah. Inks? Yeah, I mean, I don't have any... I don't, I, don't, I don't really have anything else to add. It does hit three targets, which is also amusing. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Good skill. Highly effective. Oh, yeah. Yeah. that'll be uh, for Sigil of Fire and Sigil of Air. Uh, oh. some, some extra. Yeah. 
proc chances. <laughs> Since the greatsword <laughs> auto is so slow, you can just like <laughs> you'll you'll definitely get an air and fire proc out of out of the greatsword number three mm. for sure. It's especially with if you're abusing all the extra uh, critical chance you can get yeah. from all the vulnerability. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, stuff like that. Well, that was quick. In that case, let's move on to Nightfall, which calls down a column of shadows that uh, pulses blindness and damage in a in a fairly fairly large radius. It's also a dark combo field. Uh, I think this is really gonna help. Help Necromancers out. I mean, the the AOE blind. This is good in PVE. People like this. This is highly effective, um, and that is not something that was. Oh, I guess they had Well of Darkness before, but this yeah. is just another way that they can they can get this going. Uh, make all the creatures kind of flail around and miss you and do nothing. Well, and yeah. this one's changing too. They said mm -hmm. uh, Nightfall. I don't. I don't remember exactly how they said that they were going to change it, but I remember that they said they were going to change it. But I think it's cool. I think that'll also be like if you're defending, say, a point in PvP, uh, and they come up to you and you have Chilling Darkness, you can Nightfall on the point, cover up most of the point, and they either have to like get off of it or stay on the point and be blinded continuously and also chilled at the same time. And then if, at that point, if they try to leave, like you can just kind of wail on them because they'll be chilled and you'll be able just to stick on them. But I think it's, I think it's pretty cool. And again, in PvE, uh, for dungeons or for anything that's going to require like groups of mob kills where you're going to need blinds or going to want blinds, that's just, I, think that's, I think that's really useful. I, it's definitely better. I think Dagger 4 uh, is a little bit of a blind and you have Well of Darkness, but they're just, they're not that well of Darkness has a long cooldown, and Dagger 4 is... I don't really think anybody uses offhand Dagger. I think Warhorn and Focus are generally just a lot better. But it's I, think it's... I think it's good. I think having a blind on your greatsword. And I think the... I think there's a trait in your Reaper specialization that reduces the all of your greatsword skill cooldowns. I think it's tied into Gravedigger somehow. I don't remember what it was, but yeah. I think it's like I think 3%. Um, it I may mean, be, yeah. yeah. So if you if you have like a blind that you can reduce the cooldown on, let's say we that you can just use on mobs over and over. I think that's awesome. I think that's actually like really useful. Mm. Yeah, I think it's for every, every yeah. yeah, I think it's for every target that uh, grave it's digger below, hits. It reduces the cooldown yeah. by three percent. I think. Mm -hmm. And I mean that means if you're uh, if your target's below 50% HP and you're just spamming Gravedigger, then yeah. cooldowns you can don't even matter anymore. Blind and finish you you, you may honestly be able to like just permanently blind trash mobs. Mm. Just Gravedigger. But then again, I, um, I'm not sure how it's going to interact. There are some uh, encounters in Guild Wars 2 at the moment that certain classes using certain builds, they can perm a blind the target. Yeah. They hit really slow and they can pull my blind and just get away that way with the entire fight and they can solo things that I'm not exactly sure should be soloable. I saw a guy, uh, he soloed the Mossman, uh, Fractals 50. I'm like, that's impressive. I mean, it takes some skill and practice to get down the entire rotation, but for someone to actually do that, that's uh, it deserves a slow clap. But on the other hand, once you've mastered the entire rotation and you know like in second two you have to push, push this skill, second three you have to push this, you can even make a macro and you leave it automatically with the bot and it solos it for you. Um, we, when I first got into Guild Wars 2, we were promised something more dynamic than that. So, mm, I'm not sure. Mm. Yeah, it's not, it's not desirable if you if you give a profession tools that just trivialize everything, but yeah. I think with the, the the way they're going about the content in uh, in Heart of Thorns, I think that's gonna. I, I think from what we've seen, that will it will certainly alleviate some of the problems that we've seen in the current version, where you know everything is just you can just blind it or uh, dodge everything, and it, it just completely makes everything really, really easy. So I, I'm 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 not so certain that this is going to be a really big issue in the expansion. Yeah, I think they've probably, 
I think they've had plenty of time to learn from dungeons and learn about people doing dungeons and whatever. But yeah, I think I think it'll be I think it's cool. I like it. I like the uh idea of the blinding. Okay. In that case, let's move on to a very iconic skill for the Reaper, Reaper's Grasp, which I, it says it tosses out scythes, but I think it tosses out uh, kind of claws. It looks like claws to me. I don't know about scythes. Yeah, uh, yeah it looks like which claws pull, to me as well. Pull, pull, pull your claws. allies to you, uh, gain life force for each foe struck, and also applies 10 seconds of poison. Uh, I mean, it's the opposite. Well, it's a gap closer, but... In reverse, yep. you yeah, know, exactly. Uh, you, exactly. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, I, I personally enjoy this playstyle. I never like classes that you have to spin around and move around so much that you can't even find yourself. I play with some guys. I'm like, dude, what happened? He's like, I don't know which is me. <laughs> I got confused in all my clones. Uh, I prefer the slow moving heavy hitters. And I'm like, I'm so going to get you. I'm so going to get you. And now I have the tools to bring three or four guys, which synergizes, we all know, we, all, we, all, we, we are all thinking it synergizes so well with Gravedigger. You have three yes. people leaving, mm. you bring them back, slap them twice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's five, yeah, I mean, this, this pulls five targets to the, to five? back to you. Yeah, a number yeah. of targets. Yeah. Five. Oh, it's ridiculous, so five is even worse than... <laughs> 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 I mean, in PvP, it's fine, because people are going to jump around all the time anyway, yeah. but in World v. World, when you go into a group of a lot of people and you bring five lower, like they don't have even gear and all their stats are uh, a bit lower and just trash them, it's going to cause a lot of problems until people get used to dodging the big claw that comes towards them. <laughs> yeah, <I see. laughs> you're going to have a lot yeah. of fun. I, I was really excited when I saw the report. Well, yeah, I mean, w once you get this off, uh, you're going to have to expend a lot of your, well, and a lot of people are going to have to expend a lot of their cooldowns and stuff like that in order to even get away from him, because then, then, you know, the, the massive duration of chill is applied to you. You're hobbling away, limping incredibly slowly, all your skills recharge slowly, and I think uh, dodging this <coughs> is going to be unbelievably important if you want to continue surviving. <laughs> Inks, have you got any additional thoughts on uh, Reaper's grasp? Uh, I mean, it's you pull, you know, it, it, you pull your opponents back to you. This is this is good for roaming. This is good for so many different situations. You know, I mean, granted, you're not always going to get five targets, but you have the option to get up to five targets trying to get away from you. And uh, I mean, it also it also applies poison, which is nice. Um, the cooldown seems fine on it. Yeah, I don't know. Seems like a great. Seems like a good skill. Twenty-five seconds, point seven five cast. Yeah, looks good. It also generates life force, which is a plus. Yeah. Yeah, twenty-five mm. seconds is just enough to not use it twice in the same engagement because that's too annoying. Like you bring them w mm. to you and they manage to escape and you use it again. That's no. That's that would be too OP. Mm. All right then. That is all for the weapon skills. Let's move on to the new prep profession mechanic, which is Reaper's Shroud, which gives you a massive scythe, uh, and you spin around a lot. Lots of spinning here, even more spinning to win. The new auto attack is Life Rend Slash and Life Reap, which is uh, a cleave, another cleave, and then a spin. <clears throat> uh, but the spin... Uh, well, all of this inherits all the traits that previously affected Life Brust from the conventional Death Shroud. And I think it's also worth uh, talking on the fact that Life Reap, if you're hitting two or three targets, that easily provides enough that you're not yeah. hit, you can stay in Life uh, in Death Shroud. In, in Reap Shroud in, indefinitely. Yeah. So yeah, and it start goes us off with on the dumb fire. It goes with the dumb fire. Mm. You create, you create, you generate bleeds, and every hit you generate a wee dumb fire. Mm. As I heard it. Burning. Yeah. So you <laughs> can pretty much go in and keep burning everything, which stacks. So it's going to be like a whole other way of farming. <laughs> mm. 
and the 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 speed of this chain is actually pretty fast as well. Yeah, I mean, it's really fast. Uh, it can stack. Yeah. Like pretty well. Yeah. There's also a trait that makes it 15% faster. So when I saw all of that, like it it was pretty fast to begin with, but the 15% like mm, yeah. I am I'm really excited about that because right now like I love playing Deathshot Necromancer. I, I love that build a lot. And at the same time, I also love daggers, just playing like a power dagger build and not focusing on death shroud so much. Um, mainly just because of how fast the daggers hit and because you can use like your locust swarm and your wells and just like chop people with a dagger. And it's, it's fun. I like that. But now it's like you're getting both of that because you attack really quickly. But it's also like huge AoE and it builds might. And you're in Death Shroud, so you can like have your second little health bar too. It's it's really cool. It's like they, it it feels like they combined, I guess, aspects of that a little bit, but just made it so much better. It's it's really awesome. I'm I'm really really happy about how the auto attack specifically works. I think it's cool. Mm. The only thing I guess, the only thing that I'm like disappointed about remotely is the fact that the scythe is like blue and that the eyes are blue. <laughs> I wish it was, like, a really lime green color. If it was that, um, I would never play any other class. I'd just only play Reaper. <laughs> yeah. It's like uh, about being uh, uh, not disappointed. I don't know the word for it now because I'm English. Um, when I saw they gave us, like, three trade paths at the same time, that's when I, the first idea, I'm like, oh, no, no way I'm going to get everything I ever wanted, like crit chance, crit damage, uh, condition damage, and condition duration, everything. I'm like, what the hell? And then I realized the passives are going away and we get new items. And that's why I said about the items, we don't know the stats. Because uh, if the stats are not going to be smaller than before, they should be higher to compensate for the lack of passives. But if they are, if they are going to be higher exactly how much you need to compensate, for the the passives then we might have a lot of builds where uh, you have too much crit chance like going to 130 percent and it's not like in the previous build system where you can just not select that trait you selected your trait path you have to stay on it so i really think the items are going to be very different otherwise it, it won't work mm. and i'm curious about the but rules I mean, too yeah yeah yeah. Because of all the critical uh, strike chance generation, you can just pretty m you can discard that completely when you're selecting what equipment to use. I mean, uh, there's there's no real need for precision in in a lot of these in in certain situations. You can you could pick defensive uh, defensive stats instead. Uh, and do you think that means that because of, you know in PVE obviously defensive stats pff, don't need that, just dodge everything. Do you think that means they're going to introduce uh, uh, an armor set that's just pure aggression that's got uh, power, ferocity, and condition damage on it? Ooh. Power, ferocity, and condition damage. So, like, right now... Yeah, that would like, be something. That would be That amazing, would be pretty actually. cool. <laughs> that would be... So, like, right now you have Sinisters, right? Yeah. That has... Top. Power, precision, it. yeah. It's mm. condition so damage main and precision and power minor. The Necromancer, with the traits that you can take... And Reaper Shroud or Dash, whatever the heck it's called. Um, <laughs> you're not gonna, you're not gonna need that precision anymore, or most, or at least there's the possibility that you won't need that precision. So if, if there is a stat set that replaces that with Ferocity, then forget it. That's what they'll take for sure. Mm -hmm. Like people are, people are already talking about taking Valkyries instead of Zerkers because uh, you know you're not gonna need the precision or the possibility that you won't need precision anyway. But yeah, I think uh, from what I see so far, I mean, it's again, again, it's only speculation, but if PV is going to shift towards something that requires really dynamic fighting, uh, like the way I envisioned it first, I'm like, it doesn't look that way, but maybe it will be, but it never was. And I was really disappointed in the beginning with Guild Wars 2, but it was still the best choice considering everything else. Um, if we get like uh, fights that require heavy AOE fighting, fights that require dodging, and we mix that together, 
and every single individual has its role in the team. One is tanking, one is siphoning, one is supporting, one is bursting single target. You guys know what I'm talking about with uh, real time uh, blasting into stuff to generate buffs and other stuff like simply amazing. The most dynamic fight, you don't even get that stuff in single players. Like amazing. Um, then I'm. Uh, huh. Never mind, I forgot what I wanted to say. I was in the moment. <laughs> Fuck, it was really important. It's <laughs> so horrible. Yeah. And yeah. So you, would yeah, you yeah, be, yeah, nah, nah. You be I, I got oh. it, I got it. He's got I'm it. Back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. No, I think that pure builds, the definition we have or, of pure builds right now are going to disappear. And I think we're going to have only hybrids. And by that I mean, I don't mean we're going to have uh, condition damage and power damage at the same time. No, I think the Zerkers are going to compensate for the squishiness with some other mechanics. And the old glass cannons are going to have like, okay, I'm half glass cannon, half really infiltration to compensate for my glass cannons. And the most, uh, the classes that will have the most damage will be the classes that have damage, power damage, and condition damage. Or you have like power damage and tankiness, or power damage and support, or condition and support different variations. I don't think that the old pure builds are going to exist anymore because they actually can't. You have three trade paths now. There's no way you'd select three trade paths to improve just power. There's no way. You're going to add something. I mean, in Necromancer at least. Hmm. I, I, I would like, personally, I would like to see that. I'd like to see the possibility of meta uh, hybrid builds that don't just focus on on one thing. I think that'd I, I be mean, cool. Yeah. yeah, it's it's really amazing if if we get something like it's so hard to balance something like that because you have to consider PvP as well. But they might everything uh, because they <clears throat> they compress the build system. A lot of people are complaining like we don't have so many options now. On the contrary, before we had this uh, we had. More freedom, but it was chaotic, and the actual viable options were less. But if you compress it, it's easier to balance, and every single trait does something for something. Every single trait will be useful for something. One for World of War, one for PvP, one for something else. And you can balance it that way. It's still the illusion of choice, but um, even in the chaotic freedom we had before, uh, once you get the idea of the build, which build to use, you're going to use it every single time. There's no choice anymore. The real choice comes from structure, when everything is valuable. You don't have like a million options, but only one gives any profit. You have three options, and every single one is useful for something. So, less options, but more diversity. So, that's, that's amazing. It is. Does that sort of thing excite you as well, Inx? Um, yeah, you know, I, I, I think that, uh, I'm, I mean, really what it comes down to is I'm excited to see how, you know, what they're going to offer us in PvE, right? Um, I really, not just me, but I think all of us really need to know what challenging group content means. Uh, does this mean some sort of you know, arena net twisted, and I don't mean twisted in a bad way, but, you know, their spin on some sort of rated, you know, rating system, uh, some kind of 10-man content for guilds or uh, enclosed bosses. You know, I had a lot of fun when Triple Headed Worm came out. And, yeah. uh, you know, I know, Bra I know Brazil was definitely there and Nike and some of the other people from DNT had come along too help us on Blackgate to try and convince people to run heavier damaging builds because that's what that encounter required of you at the second phase anyway. And um, <coughs> the, problem, the problem with an encounter like that in the open world, and we've now seen this with Vinerath, is that it becomes difficult to control 30 plus people at each worm. So you're talking about 90 plus players at, at a single time trying to control them to get them to do certain things, to use particular builds, have a Condi team that deals with husks, have egg blockers that deal with that particular thing, mesmers for portals, et cetera, et cetera. It goes on and on. 
And because that was such a struggle, or because it continues to be a struggle for, for a good deal of people who just want to casually try it and can complete that content, you then have a boss like Vinerath come along and his fail condition is so laughably soft that it doesn't, you know, it's a fun encounter, but it doesn't, it's not really a difficult <coughs> encounter and it has some interesting mechanics. So I'm hoping that in Heart of Thorns we can have instanced caps, you know, t you know, 10 people or, or possibly 25 people, something like that, you know. Uh, these encounters that can be a little more sophisticated, and and these encounters can also allow us to take a variety of builds, not just, not just you know Zerker builds, not just condition builds, but you know some some sort of splice to help you deal with different phases of a battle. So um, that sort of thing, uh, and and I think the specializations are starting to show us that this is possible, right? You have yeah. the Reaper, and you have Dragon Hunter, and Cro and Chronomancer. They they all do specific things but then they can all splice together and you can see how they're all working in a synergy with one another uh, and that kind of makes me excited for what PvE in general can hold I as mean, well as the other game types but uh, as an addition to what you said if they're really like godly theory crafters they can develop um, a really meaningful encounter like really hard but uh, the type of encounter that can be done in multiple ways, like two supports, four uh, fighters, or three supports, one tank, two zerkers, or something like that, and more than one way of doing it. That um, that gives a lot of uh, longevity to endgame content, or whatever the word is. Yeah. Mm. Okay, we we digressed a little bit there. Yeah, we got uh, off the track. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring it back to the uh, death, the new Death Shroud, Reaper Shroud, uh, attacks with Death Charge, which means you slide forwards. I think, <coughs> a, I think that's a funny choice of words. I like that choice of words. You slide forwards and blast an area. It's not a blast finisher though, so maybe that they're going to change that wording. Uh, and poison everyone, do some damage, and do a little leap finisher as well on a six second cooldown. Uh, I think, I mean, this is what they've done to make necromancers more mobile, uh, and I think it will, it will accomplish that quite well, actually. Uh, the, uh, I mean, and especially seeing as even if you're crippled or uh, chilled, you still go uh, the, the, full, the full distance as well. I think that's a that's a good thing. I, I mean, the the poison is a bit of bit of icing on the cake. I mean, I mean, I don't think that's a particularly important part of this, but I think I think it's more about the mobility and uh, good, a fairly good amount of damage as well. What do you guys think about Death's Charge? I think it's cool um, <coughs> being able, like, if somebody if you've got them chilled and you're working on them, or if they're contesting a point and you're beating them, and they try to disengage and get away, you just charge right back onto them and I think that's really awesome um, I do really like how the Death Shroud number two currently works uh, how it shoots out the little hand and it touches them mm. and it ports you to them I I think that's really cool I, I think I'm gonna miss that mechanic and how that works right now but at the same time like this also after you kill somebody I think it recharges or there's a trait that makes it do yeah, that it something it recharge faster I'm not going to miss that skill because I have a lot of bad experience with people that are so fast that I'm using it at the right time and they blink behind this tiny little bit of grass and it says obstructed. <laughs> By the time it reaches, yeah. it's already in there, it's already obstructed. <laughs> like, what the hell? Uh, I also want to point out that um, right here on Death's Charge, we can see that the Necromancer, the Reaper, is going to require high skill. You have to go in and out of Death Shroud to keep out with your mobility and the um, bringing of enemies closer. Because you have skills that bring mm. enemy closer. Uh, do you? I, no, no, no. You have execution for single sword. target in Death Shroud and this execution for AOE. Outside of Death Shroud, you have a bit of mobility getting towards your target in Death Shroud and uh, getting people to you outside of Death Shroud. And you have a 10 second cooldown on Death Shroud. So it's going to keep players on their toes. Do you go into that shroud to move towards or do you bring them to you? And it's going to require a really high amount of skill to, uh, to correctly assess a fight. 
And I really like that because I always wanted like high risk, high reward, slow moving, heavy hitting, AOE executioner with conditions. Like, <coughs> my God, where, where can you get all of that in one? It's like my dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> Inks, what do you think of Death Charge? Um, I wish the range was a little bit more. I feel like it's a bit short. Uh, I really need to get in and play with it and really feel that six. It's easy to say something is six hundred, and and you know, it's easier for me to visualize that when I'm actually playing and you know, uh, measuring it up on how far I can really move. I, I think I'd like to see it move a little farther than six hundred, though. Uh, ArenaNet doesn't seem to like using numbers like 700 or like those odd numbers, so <laughs> they probably wouldn't make it 700. They'd probably push it to 8 or 900, and then 900 might be a bit too far, but I think there's some middle ground between 6 and 9 that uh, that would, would make it a little bit nicer for me, or I would enjoy it a little bit more, I think. I think, I think that's fair. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> it's not not very long, and it's also quite slow as well. Maybe if they increase the speed of it, do you think that would be better? Well, uh, swiftness will. Yes, yeah, swift. No, yeah, swift, swiftness I mean... doesn't affect this though. Oh, okay. So, so yeah. it's not affected by like movement hindering conditions, like cripple, right. and it's yeah. also not affected by swiftness either. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Can. I just want to say a little something that I thought about, I just remembered again. In World v. World, because that's the only place that's going to happen in PvP, only if you're really lucky. You, you have a trait that makes it faster if you kill someone, and it's already 6 seconds. So if you can get, like, uh, what's the new buff that increases recharge time? Alacrity. That one. You get that one. <laughs> Execute someone with executioner sight jump to the next one and execute the next one and you can literally just pick out small targets in a zerg and keep jumping from one zerg to another and executing them have i ever told you guys how my how much i like the ex the, the the reaper specialization <laughs> 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 oh my god i'm so going to annoy people they're so going to report me <laughs> <laughs> Oh yes. Or you could All right. you can fear them off the map, off the side of the map and edge of the mist and then just like spam in a line with death charge if it recharges after you kill them because whenever they fall to their death. I don't know, that sounds like it might be fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the only thing that could be more fun is if you can get to suicide with someone, like drag him with you. Like drag and then jump off, <laughs> and you get and you get lower fall damage, and you fall, and it's like, <laughs> oh, that would be too much. All right then, next up is infusing terror. Shroud yourself with dark armor that grants stability every seconds, uh, every second. You may shatter this armor to make people run in terrible fear. Uh, which causes chill. Hmm? Yeah. Oh yeah, which, we, causes yeah, which also chill. causes chill. And the chill can yeah. damage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I like this for a lot of reasons. And at the same time I'm also kinda gonna miss the fear that's like currently on Death Shroud. I really like this because if I'm in PvP and somebody is down and I want to res them, but there are like two people stomping them and I only have one single target fear, that kind of sucks because they might mm. get stomped by the other person stomping. But if I have this, I can go up and I can stability and then shatter it and then fear them away. I can, like, save someone who is being, like, stomped or cleaved down by multiple people. Yeah, I really like that. But at the same time, like, the fear on Death Shroud currently, I don't even, I don't remember what it's called, but, like, you can flash into Death Shroud really quickly, like when you're running up to a point, and since it's ranged, you can just fear them away and they can get off the. Like, if they're contesting, if they're about to capture a point, it's neutral, but they haven't captured it. You can, from range, fear them off so they don't capture it, and then you can get onto the point and contest it, keep it from getting captured. Um, I really, really like that, having that, like, really, really long range fear. And this, I feel like this in a situation like that, if you are going to defend a point, it can be a little bit hurtful, but 
protecting allies, stuff like that. I think it's I think it's incredibly useful there. And I think also having a stability while you're in Death Shroud, I think that's awesome because I don't even think anybody takes foot in the grave, the stability trait right mm -hmm. now. Like I don't, I don't, I don't think anybody ever takes that trait just because uh, the whatever the other one's called is the fifty percent crit chance. That's so much better. Um, I or you could, oh, you, <laughs> okay. Nemesis takes the foot of the grave, I guess. But having <laughs> having that too, having stability and also having fifty percent crit chance, I think that's awesome. But mm -hmm. I don't know. I've never used foot in the grave. I've never really used. Oh and my god! I did. I I I wanted to keep it for myself. The new build that I'm <laughs> releasing, the first time in PvP since I played Guild Wars 2, we did so many 2v3s on footage. It's amazing, and we did one 2v4. Me and a friend wiped four people with my build with foot in the grave. So. Wow. That's just a I think spoiler there. We wiped were four they, players. Were they moving Ooh. Doomfire down into the last trait line or is that staying I don't I don't remember. Yeah, they moved Doomfire down finally. They moved it, yeah. Okay. Finally. So you'll have to pick between Doomfire, Foot in the Grave, and the fifty percent precision. Perception, yeah. And okay, so yeah. With with this trait, if you go for more stability, you like the unseeable one. If you yeah. go for more damage, you still don't get stun locked, which was really mm -hmm. stupid if they didn't give stability. Because like, okay, I have damage, stun, 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 stun. <laughs> and like, what the fuck? I never get to use it. So yeah, some really good thinking there. I mean, even mm -hmm. I'm not going to sound really cocky, but I would have never thought of putting stability and fear into one skill. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, I think that goes quite well with the the flavor of uh, necromancers, doesn't it? I mean, it, it's all about inverting things on your opponents <laughs> and, and stuff like that. It just it just seems to make sense. I mean, what do you what do you convert? You convert stability to fear, right? Yeah. Or yeah, yeah, all you the time. Rock stuff. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like that, except not quite. <laughs> Uh, Inks, would you uh, do you have any elaborations on infusing Terra? I mean, other than that, I, I like it a lot. I think that stabil I think giving stability here is extremely important, especially for the Reaper. Um, the fact that you can then pop that stability to fear for a second is a great interrupt. I think there's a lot of playability in structured PvP here. Um, maybe that's where I see its greatest use, I suppose. But. Uh, I believe fear now acts as for the defiant bar. Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe fear also takes a chunk off the defiant bar yeah. as well. Yeah. So I mean, this is a, this is another CC that they'll have in those situ in those new situations where it's like, you know, boom. Here's a here's a quick little fear. It probably won't take a lot of that that bar away, but it, it's something, right? So there's that to consider as well, I guess. I, you know, I, what, what it really comes down to is I just like all the options that we're getting here. There's so many choices. There's so many good choices um, when it comes to, like, how this synergizes with the other, like, Grandmaster traits that you take. Like, you know, Foot in the Grave and, and taking uh, Doomfire and, and different things. Like, although, Doom, was Doomfire moved from Grandmaster? Still uh, Grandmaster. I think it's still yeah. Grandmaster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I just like that you have all these choices that can then work and interact with each other. Like you guys were saying, you know, you can you can trade for stability if you want. You can trade for more power, more damage if you want. And you're and the player is going to have to make those choices. And I think it's interesting what Brazil was saying as well, where uh, you know this new death shroud, this new night shroud is really powerful. It's really interesting, but there's certainly going to be players out there who still want the original death shroud, and so. Now you're going to have to make this choice. Do I want to play a Reaper with a new Death Shroud or do I want that old Death Shroud because it has, you know, a different way of using, like, the fear and the chill and the mobility and such. So I think, uh, I think it's great that they're giving you these difficult choices to make. My, my concern about that is uh, not only will the old choices be as viable as the new ones or the other way around, do we have... Um, 
I said it's not going to be this. It shouldn't be the same. Like if I go into, if I use soul reaping, I don't want to do the same damage in the same way as if I don't use soul reaping. And the other way has to have its place in the new PV, because in in PVP it's questionable. It's balancing all around, but in PV, it has to have the old uh, the old ways have to have a place as well as the new ways. It's just a different way, a different approach, two different encounters. If we don't get different encounters, all of this masterful build system is like one of the best build systems I have ever seen. It's once again for nothing. <laughs> I bet the people That's who one made the build system went to the people <coughs> that did the PV system like, guys, what the fuck? <laughs> what, what, what is this? We made all of that for nothing? <laughs> <laughs> okay the fourth skill is soul spiral Ooh. totally traditional spin around wildly uh, for two seconds and hit people 11 times that's interesting uh, in, a, in a pretty big area I mean a, a lot of the a lot of the skills in in the new death shroud is uh, they have a quite a, a quite a big AOE because the scythe is takes up about a hundred percent of your screen, <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, as I think actually, uh, I want to Does talk it about. Scale on uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I think it was constant, wasn't it? Was the I don't size know. constant? Because they had a Norn showing it off, right? They had a it human was, showing it off in that human. MMORPG video. Oh, in right. the in the live stream, it was a Norn. Well, right. at least the shouts were Norn, Norn voice. Yeah. Uh, but the human, when they were holding it in that little lion's arch clip, the scythe was like going through the ground and stuff because it was so big. <coughs> but I guess on a Norn, if it, I would imagine it probably stays the same size. And like on a Norn or like a char, it may not like clip into the ground as much, maybe. Because they'll just be bigger models, I don't know. But if yeah. if if it scales based on size, like charred necromancers, that, that'll be just hilarious. Like that'll be so big. Yeah. The zero will be dragging it through the ground because you know, <laughs> <laughs> it'll be like five azure tall. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, you, if you want to play a reaper as an azure, you have to bring a friend as well to hold the size up, size up. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, it's it's a two-player game now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just, you've got to per you've got to be perfectly in sync as well. Swing the side. You need two guys uh, cooperating this, perfectly. This may scare people a little bit. What I'm about to say, but when we're talking about like new stats, and I think this one, if you go into, maybe it's not even. You may not even have to go into blood magic with this, but I think this heals allies when you spin. Or maybe it was blood magic that you could make it heal allies. Because it it, it, re it replenishes your life force, I think. Um, so what I'm about to say is, what if there is a stat that's like power, ferocity, and healing power, and you can spin on top oh, of enemies oh, oh. and like heal people and be that's 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 a really weird thought. Like that's 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 a really. That will make Boots happy, I think, with his, like, vampire stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, thinking about getting new stats and, like, not needing precision on Necromancer anymore is, like, it's really, really weird. Um, but I don't know. Because your auto attack is going to build might and it's going to build vulnerability. So you're going to have vulnerability. And you also have, like, if you take the death perception and you have 50%. You could totally have another stat like healing power and just heal people with Death Shroud number four. That's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of interesting. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, uh, uh, healing builds don't have. Uh, I think for the Necromancer at least, it's missing like another ten or fifteen percent to be viable. I mean in general because you don't really need that much healing at the moment in dungeons. But even so, uh, in a proper dungeon, I don't think it's there. I don't think the support is quite there. It needs another 10% to be worth it. Uh, the support is, like I said, to offer DPS uptime. So if you cannot offer that DPS uptime, just add another DPSer, and you all have lower DPS uptime, but overall you have a higher effectiveness. But who knows? 
who knows the new encounters maybe healing per se that is not that much required maybe it's healing and debuffing and healing and blinding or whatever or seeing or who knows it all depends on mm. the pv the the cooldown on this strikes me as fairly high it's on a 40 <laughs> second cooldown mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know i would i would like to see this come down a little bit i think uh I'm not sure. Not sure though. Would would that make it overpowered or too strong, especially with all the synergies that we were just talking about? Yeah. If you yeah. could like, if you could go on top of like, if I don't know, like if you're in a team fight or something, and you could just constantly go in and like spam that and heal people with like healing power, that would be kind of stupid, I think. But. Or, like, just generate your life force if you could just constantly spam it while doing, like, lots of damage. Uh, I don't know. That'd, that'd be kind of... The tooltip damage is really high. And yeah. since it's a multiple hit, you benefit from on-hit effects and a lot of stuff. That's that's yeah. really yeah. weird. What I, what I really liked about Guild Wars 2 is that every single skill uh, has uh, its place. Like, single target skills have their place when you're fighting two monsters you don't use the single target you use the aoe one when you're fighting a boss you don't use the aoe one you use the single target one and they all have their place <coughs> i think with a lower cooldown it's not even worth it to use single target uh single target skills anymore you just use the aoe one for everything so yeah okay in yeah and, case, and the cooldown the cooldown is the same as as life transfer as well so mm. it's yeah uh, and I think it actually, I think this one actually hits one or two more times in life transfer. I think life transfer is like eight. Mm. I, I may be wrong. It may be like ten. I'm not sure. Nine. Nine? Okay. Nine. So this hits two, two more months. times. Yeah. It's pretty strong. Hmm. All right. In that case, let's conclude with Executioner's Scythe, which is a, a massive overhand strike. Which deals uh, increasing damage uh, at percentages below fifty uh, below fifty percent. So above fifty percent damage, it does a little bit, but below twenty five percent, the the tooltip damage is <laughs> one thousand nine hundred, uh, hmm. and it also also stuns for one and a half seconds yeah, and it's... deploys a, an ice combo field and chills. So it, this has got everything, you know. <laughs> yeah, especially with the stun, you like you miss someone. And you, he heals right in your face, and like ah, and now he's stunned, <laughs> and you get to even do a wave and then finish him. That's <laughs> <laughs> today I did some PvP with my new build, and some guy was trying to kill me so much, and at one point I stopped and I and I wrote stop it, <laughs> and then I left. Oh my god, I got that on camera. It was amazing. Mm. Someone said in chat that this skill should be unblockable. That oh, oh. <laughs> well, you can make it unblockable. Wait, you yeah, know, you, you can, can make, make it unblockable. Yeah. If you, I don't know what you do, you have unblockable. Yeah, if you, you get them with the AOE stun, you get unblockable yeah. all in mm. your next few seconds. So you oh. AOE stun them, and then you <laughs> unblockably stun them some more. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, oh, I, th no. I think the oh, oh I was going to say that the I think the ice field is really nice as well because it, I mean if you can keep them in that that's going to apply an awful lot of chill and you can also get frost armor as well by using yeah. uh, death charge as well uh, through the ice field which I think is really strong because uh, you, there's already a trait that you take less damage from chilled targets and shit chilled lasts longer. But then if you have frost armor as well, there's another 10% uh, damage reduction on frost armor. And whenever they hit you, they get chilled. And then if you've got protection as well, I mean, just think, you're not going to take any damage. Infinite health. My concern, That's one hell of an exploit. There's already a lot of, in my opinion, there's enough punishment for blocking targets. There's nothing that punishes perma-evade crap. That's really annoying. Mm. Yeah. There was a time, there was a few uh, encounters, and I'm so sorry. I did a PvP video when I showed how I get zerged, <laughs> basically, and I have no <laughs> chance. 
and uh, I showed some thief that totally crushed me in 1v1s even though in 1v1s I mostly win and there was another thief even better than that one I chased him from mid all the way to my uh, close with scepter auto attacks and I couldn't hit him once he reached my close faster than me by the time I got there he went back mid and I was following him I did like 8 auto attacks and all of them were evade and I found the footage after I published the video I'm like I'm, I'm so going to pull that. I couldn't hit him with scepter auto attacks and he has like 0 0.5 seconds cast with an after cast of, I don't know, 0 0.2 or something like that. 0 0.7, I couldn't hit him once. <laughs> he didn't even go <laughs> in, his, in stealth. He was like toying with me like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and he's, he was in a game, in a guild called uh, Focus Necro only to troll the <laughs> hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think that the, there's quite a long wind-up on this skill. Yeah. Uh, is is that a, is that an issue, or do you just simply combo it with the stability? The stability and from number don't three. Don't even care. Yeah. Yeah. The stability from number three, you executioner them, and then if that's still up, you shatter it and fear them through your frost field. Mm. Maybe maybe that could work. I don't know. And then you death charge to the next target and kill that yeah. one as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Just repeat that until everyone's dead. Just that's the how to play Reaper. Kill, death charge, kill, death charge. This reminds repeat. me of the new they made the the thing they do. Uh they made a macrom for Katarina in League of Legends and you can spam skills faster than normal and I saw Katarina literally wiping five players. Just <laughs> blinking so fast I had to slow in slow motion, you can watch it on YouTube later. It's uh, it automatically jumps to the next target, and I don't know. It just does like this on the screen, and everyone dies. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> it's a really weird hack slash macro, mm. and yeah, you can do something like this in World v World. I know someone's going to try. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we briefly uh, talk about the abundance of world finishes that Necromancers yeah. now yeah. have? I mean, you can put down the ice field there and <laughs> spin around wildly and shoot off chilling bolts. That's great. Chilling's good. But I think what's really interesting is the amount of uh, world finishes with dark fields because that's going to uh, give a hell of a lot of sustain yeah. uh, to necromancers because, you know, you can be spinning, I mean, nearly constantly with Gravedigger and constantly send out, uh, you know, leeching bolts which will steal health. And this, is, this isn't confirmed, but... It may be the case that uh, life stealing, ju just stealing life, will restore uh, health to you while you're in Death Shroud. It's confirmed. Yeah. It, it oh, is. Yeah. Now yeah. It, it's, it's, uh, yeah, that's confirmed. In Death Shroud. Uh, yeah. Which is behind huge. the curve, guys. Yeah, yeah I think that is absolutely for, for huge. Mm. That's. Uh, I mean, huge. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, with the number of hits that you get off with uh, the number of hits from the spinny spin, and with all you know the vampiric. Uh, some blood magic. That's a, a lot of uh, a lot of health stolen and stuff with uh, you know sigil of blood and leeching and stuff like that. Uh, you know that's a, a serious amount of sustain. And then if you add in the combos to that as well, I think uh, in reapers not that easy to kill uh, by any means. Yeah, the... <laughs> Anyone want to comment on that? Well, no, I was I was thinking about that earlier, and I just didn't think to mention it. But yeah, like fighting someone on a point and putting down great sword four, and then just spamming grave digger, you'll be able to like just heal, and it's that's funny. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's just it's great. Like and especially if you take like you could take like a cav. I think cavalier is toughness, power, ferocity. I may be wrong. Yeah. Um. But sounds right. I think, I think that's, that's I think right. that's yeah. what it is. Shev and you Shev you have a you have a big health pool on Necro naturally. Uh so you can take like a Cavalier's amulet and you can put on your vulnerability with Greatsword three, you can put down your Greatsword four, and now suddenly you have all of this toughness and you have world finishers in a dark field that you can reduce the cooldown on and just spin and heal yourself. You have a high health pool, you have toughness, you just have like you have like this tons of sustain and survivability just like this is like here have this and you get to just kill people like all the time it's it's awesome that's yeah, that's really really cool 
yeah, it's it's really awesome, but you're still lacking the mobility, and that's yeah. the weakness of the Reaper. And I don't mind that. I always like to play like I want to feel on my Necromancer if I master it. I want to feel like Sauron going against an army. You know, it takes a while to walk there, but once I get there, I want to hit and people go flying with high skill, high um, what's it called? High skill, high reward, something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's excellent. Yeah. <coughs> I think yeah, someone is, someone yeah. in chat is asking what's preventing someone from interrupting all this stuff that we're talking about that you're doing. And I mean the truth is nothing. Nothing is stopping you from interrupting or evading or dodging or getting out of the way. I mean that's what that's what the that's where this the the skill play comes into pl uh comes into action here. I mean, there will be some stability, so you won't be able to necessarily stop all of those things. Um, and that'll be important to Necros. That's why stability is important to Necros. But, uh, you know, some of these things have long wind-ups, and you will be able to see that they're coming, and sometimes you will be able to dodge out of the way. But, you know, it's the Necros' job, it's the player's job, to either avoid those hits or trap your opponent in place so that he can't avoid those hits. Yeah, and also... You have lots of big hitting stuff, and you have chill, and I think there's, if you take withering precision for whatever reason, and I think there's a shout that there's a shout that applies weakness now too, and weakness reduces endurance regeneration, so that's all like counterplay to counterplay against the reaper. You can prevent people from dodging more. You can slow them down so they can't get away from you, and like, it's it's. I think that again, like, plays into just like high skill stuff. It's not just pressing one on the death shroud auto attack from like 800 range away or something. It's it's really cool. I I really really like how <coughs> this is coming to be. Yeah, mm. and that's really important. Uh, we can talk like really high level, and people <coughs> have like 600, uh, 6,000 games played. You no, know, all of all of all of these things, even while sleeping, they're still playing. Uh, but the most, one of the most important things, uh, the average player, I always say the average player, it's all about the average player, and especially in a game, in any game, it's about the average player. Is it fun? That's the number one question. Is mm. it fun? If it's not fun, no funding, no future content, no nothing. And imbalance is not fun, uh, grinding is not fun, and um, even owning people, even, I mean, PV imbalance. But in PvP, if you don't have counters, if you keep owning people, people get bored. The, the fact that you have to, the fact that it's challenging and demanding is part of the fun. And of course, the fact that we look really badass is also fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely for sure. And uh, that concludes all the, the weapon skills and the death round skills. And it's time to talk about some shouts. Some shits. <laughs> <laughs> not not a fan. Not a fan, Brazil. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm leaning more towards not a fan, but I'm still I'm I'm still kind of taking the let's wait and see approach. But I don't know. We'll have to see. You know, I think the, the I think me and Brazil talked about this before this was officially announced. You know, we did a lot of speculating, and we were both excited for. I think more group synergy, more group support shouts. Mm. So it's always a little disheartening when you really put all your hopes in one basket and want that want that to come true, and then it's like the total opposite of what it, you were I, hoping to get. Yeah, whenever I that, that's that's I was specifically hoping for like party buffs or stuff like that right. from the shouts. And when I read the article, when it said necromancer shouts aren't set on bolstering allies, they're more designed to do damage. I was just like, I was like pulling my hair and like punching things. I was, I was really mad about that. And then I settled down and I was like, okay, well, we'll we'll see how it works out. But I don't know. It's the one that I really don't like. Like, what the fuck? A shout that makes jagged horrors. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't. Yeah. I, uh, I don't understand that. I don't know no. the point, but like shouts that apply weakness or whatever, like that. That's that's I'm okay with that. 
But in the I don't the healing shout. Yeah, I don't. I I don't like the healing shout. Uh, yeah. I, it, I think in almost every situation, it's just subpar, really. I mean, if you're only hitting one target, it's it's terrible. Yeah, and, <laughs> and granted, like unexpected things, like in PV, I'm, this is I guess PvP related. Unexpected weird little builds always kind of come around. Like I'm sure at some point, for like a brief period of time, there's going to be like a shout sword like necro meta for like two weeks where like everybody's playing soldier runes with shouts and like constantly removing condition and like healing from great sword and stuff like something weird like that but like that's all I ever expect that shout to like see any play in like some like kind of weird gimmicky build that comes and goes that no one really thinks about I honestly I think consume conditions is just like I think that's just going to be the heal skill that everyone uses, or antitoxin yeah. spray, either yeah. one. Maybe healing well in a support build, but that's about it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'd say, uh, I take it. You know. So go ahead. I personally, go ahead, when contrary to Brazil, when I saw that we are not getting party buffs, I'm like, yes, <laughs> I was really <laughs> happy because I, like I said in the beginning, I don't want to have Necromancer turn into a guardian or something like that. Yeah, I want and to debuff. Now I'm not particularly happy with these ones, <laughs> but <laughs> the idea is there. I'm really happy yeah. with Chill to the Bone. That's like really happy, and nothing That's the can elite. save you is okay. The elite yes, one is chill yeah, to the, the bone. The chill yeah. to the bone. Mm. And nothing can save you is okay, but w I'm guessing we'll get to that uh, when we go one by one. Yeah. Yeah. I take it we're all agreed on the, the healing skill that it's it's not so, that great. The healing okay. skill, your soul is mine. Uh, it's definitely lackluster. I think it would be nice if the healing could scale based on the number of targets it hits. Uh, in addition to the life force that it gives, maybe, maybe increasing the heal by about 500 more health would make it uh, would make it a bit better. I think. It, it's. I think a chat, chat, Twitch chat, source of wisdom, as always, has made some really good points. If you have the trait that reduces the cooldowns when you for each target you hit with a shout uh, and stuff like that, and the fact that when you're in uh, world versus world, or yeah. stronghold, for example, when there's a lot of targets always available. Uh, this is something. I mean, I'm being told by chat that it's 13 seconds. This is on a 13 second cooldown. Uh, Jebro says that, the heal increases with the amount of targets. Oh, it does as well. Okay, so okay, maybe it's not it as does. bad as we're yeah. Thinking. Did was that listed somewhere? Because the tooltip suggests I don't otherwise. We are looking at the tooltips, and it doesn't say here that it does. Because if it does, that's a, mm. that's kind of okay. the thing to take in World v World. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Mm. That sounds fair. Yeah. Yeah. In that case, yeah, I think it has. In that case, it definitely has a place in in certain situations. So we've all been enlightened here. Mm. But there are more shouts. You are all weaklings. It does a tiddly bit of damage, and. <laughs> uh, it uh, in inflicts conditions on them, giving you boons per foe struck. So it puts weakness on everyone, and then gives you four stacks of might for each target. target. So that's twenty stacks of might. Uh, this is effective. Uh, the duration isn't that long, but you can with with runes and stuff like that, you can stretch this out for a a pretty good time, really. Uh, I, so I think this is actually a, a, again, if you know, if you, if you're in one v one, it's kind of there. Uh, it's all right, uh, but if you've got two people, two lots of weakness, eight stacks of might, then, you know, I mean, that's what they were emphasizing, is that the, the shouts are kind of okay with one or two targets, but they really come into their own when you're dealing with uh, larger fights, and I think, I think this shout is probably the epitome of that. I mean, 20 stacks of might, and then maybe you unleash your uh, scary spin to win attacks and just kill everyone in one hit. I mean, that's what's going to happen here, I think, but... What do you guys think? Yeah, in the in the duration that that might last, if you're attacking somebody below, like fifty percent health with the Grave Digger, 
I think you could, you could probably get off like two or three grave diggers with that. Two of them. Yeah, with the duration. And then if you have like strength runes or something on top of that, maybe like a third. I think that's, that's pretty good. Uh, or if you have my duration and they're below 25, you say you are all weaklings and go into Death Shroud and hit them with the number five really hard. Boom. Like that could... If you can get the might to last long enough, I think that would be pretty funny. But... Yeah, I think this is this is probably the shout, I think, that... Maybe I like it the second most. I think the Elite's probably my favorite. Right. <laughs> Yeah, you know, when I when I first read this tooltip, I thought that it gave might to everybody in the party, and I was really excited. I was like, this is insane. <laughs> and then it's like, no, it's only you. And I'm like, oh, well, that's a shame. Yeah. Uh, you know, the duration on the might, I think I'd like to see another second on there, but yeah, that's it's exactly not bad. I think it's I okay. Yeah. One more second, because it's okay if you're already there. It's like if you're ready to hit someone and they're all there and you like just might and hit. But that's like best case scenario which almost never happens unless you're fighting noobs. You need a one second to get to that person. It might be just too late. You start with might and by the time you finish you know you don't have might. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's not too crazy but still pretty good, I'd say. Overall. Let us uh, move on to Rise, everyone's favorite one. Damage people <laughs> for a, a tiny amount of damage and summon a jagged horror near each enemy struck. Hmm. The only way uh, this shout is ever going to be good if it's going to be a wall. <laughs> and there's no <laughs> upper cooldown on it. <laughs> <laughs> no upper limit. Like put it in front of a zerg of people and just have like a hundred of those. <laughs> then yeah, I could understand. So we so we kind of already know that the jagged horrors are probably getting replaced. They said as much on the stream that okay. they are toying with different creatures that they could use. Flesh golems would be OP probably, <laughs> uh, definitely I guess. But there are other there are other creatures they can do. Or Jagged Horrors really need to get... Now, it looks like they got a little bit of a buff because they were doing a bit more damage, but they need a much larger buff if you're just going to use Jagged Horrors. Like, they just simply aren't enough in this situation. And the other problem is AI sucks. It's just a simple fact. The, the Necro AI in particular, Ranger Pets aside, which also need a rework, the AI on these things just isn't very good. You could even see in the videos that they were showing, they just stand at his feet. He hit five targets, five of them stand at his feet and do almost nothing for a couple of seconds. I mean, it's just... In order for this to ever be useful or ever be good, uh, the AI needs to be fixed, it needs to be reworked, and Jagged Hearts need to be replaced with something more effective. Maybe uh, if they make them kamikaze by default, so you don't have to yeah. activate. Yeah. That's, and like that's little true. fuckers that explode unless you mm. you do something to them. That's something. Yeah, that would be a that would be quite a lot better. Yeah. Hey, once could, again, Arena Net should be watching this stream. Like pick them up <laughs> as a bundle and throw them or something. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. And especially seeing as you can pick things up in Death Shroud now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this would this would be well. That would. I was gonna say this would be cool if like you made a flesh worm or something, but then that would just make flesh worm useless. <laughs> 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 but, Speaking of what? golem, I want a new golem. Yeah. It's ugly and it's stupid. It's like <laughs> it's like yeah. a unicorn got hit by a truck, <laughs> oh. and it's now dumb and weird looking. <laughs> <laughs> So many times I have the entire video, a part of a video dedicated to, like, I'm going to use this at the right time and interrupt someone. And just Golem just charges into thin air, and just, just charges into nothing. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. That's exactly the face that I'm making, like, Golem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, the next shout is Suffer. Which is not very nice. Yeah. I mean, even if you're against, I guess you want them to suffer, especially if 
if they're running a build you don't like. If they're annoying you, you do want them to suffer. But you do a little bit of damage. Uh, transfer conditions uh, to, to each foe. The, your conditions are distributed evenly amongst your foes. Chills them and doesn't break stun anymore because that got changed. Move to the other one instead. Um, I think this one is kind of okay. I think it, and maybe it needs a little bit more. Maybe if if it if maybe if it gave all your conditions to everyone. But right now, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's particularly strong. Thoughts? You know, I would like to see this. Um... You know, I, I know that we don't want to have too much synergy here where you're, you're, let's just scratch that thought. So, Suffer basically, <laughs> what, I, what I think Suffer needs is that I think it really should cause all your nearby allies to transfer a condition as well. So, like one condition from allies to enemies would make this stronger. And uh, I, think it, I think it should channel a little bit faster. Seems a bit mm. too slow. Uh, one and a quarter seconds is a long time. Yeah, uh, I agree. Uh, think, uh, yeah. Considering it's a 40 second cooldown. Uh, yeah. When am I? When am I ever going to need a 40 second cooldown skill that transfers on condition? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you, you, well, you've got consumed conditions for that. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. A that's much better cooldown. Yeah. It it just doesn't do anything. Doesn't have a place really. Yeah. Yeah. Needs a buff. Right. Yeah. Needs it a should buff. make it should make jagged horrors as well. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just merge them together. <laughs> Actually, that's not a bad just, idea. <laughs> yeah. Everything should make yeah. jagged horrors. Just yeah. lots of them. Just every single Except shout third, also dot, spawns dot, jagged horrors. <laughs> 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 that will be awesome. Okay. Nothing can save you. Now this is a fun one. You damage foes around you, converting their boons into vulnerability. Your attacks become unblockable, and the duration of the unblockableness is increased based on the number of foes struck. So it can it will give you a minimum of five seconds and a maximum of nine seconds of unblockableness, and it will also give you uh, on your opponents five vulnerability stacks for each uh, boon removed. It does two bo two boons each, so you need three enemies to fully ma uh, you know. Uh, yeah, I think this is really good. Yeah, it's crit chance. It is unblockable yeah. for like your death shroud number five or something. Uh, I think it's I think it's a really cool shout, uh, and the boon removal too. Like if you, you, if you say you have the spinal shiver trait and you're getting someone low, like an elementalist, they you're fighting them. And you manage to like take them down. They have all their boons. They have their stability and stuff. You can pull off some boons with this. If you manage to trigger spinal shivers, that'll take off more boons. That'll put on chill, and then you can just like just sit there and spin on them with a grave digger. Uh, again, like the conditions to be able to do that. That's like some like perfect storm scenario a little bit, but it's still a thing. And also like. If you're fighting just a warrior that like goes to balance stance, so you can't fear them, you can just shout and take the stability off, you give them vulnerability, go into death shroud, fear them away off the point or something like that. Uh, and that's I think it's pretty cool. That's, I think it's a pretty cool shout. This, uh, this shout was the missing link needed to um, take care of entire. Uh, you know when you have a single target that buffs itself, you have boon removal for single target. But when they share buffs, there's nothing you can do. You remove from the guy, and some other guy gives the buffs, the buffs back. And the well was not enough. Now with the well and nothing can save you, can actually handle teams that go into full buffing, and there's no way you get the buffs off of them. Now you have how. That's why I like nothing can save you. It's really nice. Mm. I'd, I'd like it to be about a 0.75 second cast time over one second. But uh, otherwise, I agree. This is a good one. Mm. Yeah, I think th this is. Uh, other than the elite, I would probably say this is the. I, I would hazard to say this is the strongest of the shouts, especially considering you can reduce its cooldown as well if if you want that to happen. Yeah, and also a really good point from Galk the Bloody. You can get a, a trait that will for each target hit by a shout, you will get a. Uh, a stack of might and 1% life force. So even though some of the 
the shouts may seem all a little bit lackluster. If you can grab some might, that's pretty strong as well. And obviously life force. Life force is always good. You sound like you're dying in Skype. I'm not sure if that's just like me or no, if your internet's no, fine. He has some issues with his internet at times. Right? Okay. But it yeah. gets back after one second or so. I think because okay. it's, he's streaming as well. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Uh-oh. Did the stream die? Know. Hopefully not. No, I think the stream's okay. Okay. Looks fine. I'm not sure. Okay. okay. Uh... I think it's stabilizing again. Okay, you're you're okay. starting to sound a little better in Skype. Do I sound normal now? I yeah, you lie. sound you sound yeah, fine now. Okay. Okay. Right. Resume. <laughs> 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 okay. Where where were we on this one? I think we were chill, about to go to the chill to the bone. Chill yeah, to the bone. chill to the bone. Okay. Uh oh, stream is lagging. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh. Did you use the shout oh. on it? Or <laughs> yeah, I, I've used the shout. It's got 66% re movement speed reduction. <laughs> okay, I th I th Hopefully, it I some guy in stream said something really, really interesting. Um, Doctor Rock the Puss. <laughs> he said shouts for Reaper needed <laughs> to deal with evade thieves, and that's ooh, actually ooh. that's pretty smart. We can make. Uh, the rice thing, summon little fuck, little fuckers <laughs> that run after <laughs> targets that are evading and they cannot be evaded. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be fun. Uh, oh, I, uh, yeah, hang on, hang on. This, this stream is, is not having a good time. Okay. So well, it's my terrible sound, blah, blah, blah. Or was that really you saying something and we got it in slow motion? <laughs> I think. Uh, I think. <laughs> oh, disaster! Uh oh, my internet is terrible. English. Okay, right. I think it's back now. It's back now. Yes. Okay. I've got my green green box on OBS. Is back. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's talk about chill to the bone. I absolutely love this. I think it's awesome. Uh, if you don't get interrupted, you are going to ruin everyone's life and then become immune to conditions for a while as well. And 12 seconds of chill as well. <clears throat> this is not, not good for people if they get hit by this. And of course, it's a shout range as well. Uh, so be afraid. Be afraid of chill to the bone. It will chill you to the bone. Uh, stun you for two seconds. The damage is actually very high for an AoE. Yeah. 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 Because the, the wells do more, but you can dodge out of them. So overall, mm -hmm. they do less. But this one really hits hard. And a two-second stun, like, actually works on poor my evade thieves. A lot of them don't use stun breakers. And in two seconds, you can actually kill one. I caught one once, and he died very fast. <laughs> but I think he was <laughs> AFK. <laughs> I think he was AFK. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah, so go ahead, Nick. Go ahead, Brazil. Well, 12 seconds of chill, like, that's just, that's hilarious. Like, it's I ridiculous. can, <laughs> I'm already thinking about going out at, like, nighttime in World View World with, like, ghost pepper poppers, like, just to make it <laughs> even worse, like, chill on crit. And, like, just, this is, this is so funny because I used to have, like, this dream that, like, chill hammer guardian would be, like, a thing. And, just it, it, a 12 second chill is just it's stupid and if they cleanse it you can just start putting it right back on with a great sword or like your other stuff it's it's just it's funny i love it even like i don't care if the cooldown is like 120 seconds like whatever it's that's awesome i just like it for the chill duration mm. and the damage like the damage is good it's awesome it's awesome yeah i feel like i feel like chill to the bone is uh it's an ability that if if you use it well, then it can win you the fight. It can mm -hmm. definitely win you the games. Uh, yeah, it does have a long cast time of two seconds, but if you can cover this two seconds with uh, stability, mm -hmm. then you can definitely tip the fight uh, in your favor. You know, it has, uh, it has a two-second stun, two seconds to cast, two seconds stun, 
but you're gonna you could hit five people with a two second stun. That is extremely strong. Twelve seconds of chill is ridiculously good for the Reaper. Uh, and if your opponents don't have a Condi cleanse ready to take care of this chill, and you know right away, uh, the the vulnerability that that you could have traded over it is, you know. I don't know. It's it's going to be ridiculous. And they're talking about, you know, the resistance is probably going to get replaced with stability as well. So that makes it even stronger. I yeah. mean, mm. yeah, I don't know. This is this is an extremely good one. I feel like this is going to force warriors to, like, have to take Shake It Off. Because, like, in team fights, like, if you don't have Shake It Off, like, to stun break and remove conditions, like, this, whatever. Like, Twelve seconds of chill is it's it's so ridiculous to think about. Mm. And even like okay. even and resistance. Well, I think resistance would be cool, but stability, like that, I'm fine with either one of those, honestly. Mm. Does anyone have any closing thoughts on that before we move on to the trait? <clears throat> nah, I'm just gonna troll a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. This is what people have been waiting for. That's why we had you on. <laughs> Go for it. What's going on now? Oh. No, no, he was, he was going to... I think he made troll people. He misunderstood, with the yeah. He's going to troll people with a shout. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to freeze people oh, at really bad moments. Like in air and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Get some good screenshots. Yeah. And I'm going to record it too, and I'm going to make like a wall of people, like edit it in such a way, like, here, <laughs> this is my collection. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's before, right right before we move on, chat's talking about this. I thought about this as well, but people seem to think that I want everything super buffed on Necros already. And, you know, I think there are some <laughs> buffs that need to happen, but uh, what do you guys think about the 120 second cooldown on this? Uh, on this elite, I think it's. Fine. I think it's. De I think it's deserved, really. Especially seeing is you can take this down by thirty-five percent uh, if it hits five people. So, if you, if you use the the trait that reduces the cooldown, so. I mean, I think corresponding to the power of the skill, I think one hundred and twenty seconds is okay. Yeah. Okay. Should what we do get you, into what do you think? Yeah, Nemesis, would you agree with that? That the cooldown's okay, or would you like to see a little yeah, bit yeah, quicker it's, cooldown? Uh, considering the average game time, and I counted, <laughs> is around eight minutes. Um, you use it like three times successfully. It's not. I don't know what. It's okay. Considering you can uh, actually stealth an entire team about the same time and make really interesting plays that way. When you show up with five people out of nowhere. Okay. In that case, let's talk about some traits. Yes. Uh, the first, the first one is <coughs> Shivers of Dread, which is whenever you f inflict fear, you also chill. Uh, this is good. It was remarked upon on the stream that this is so that when you when you chill people. Uh, when you fear people, rather, they don't get away from you. I mean, I think that's kind of an odd way of looking at it, but this means that even when they can't do anything and they're just running away in utter terror from you, uh, you can still bash them uh, even better. And, of course, it, you know, you can, you can modify your chill so it does damage and stuff like that. Yeah, that's a two-way coin, actually, because sometimes you fear yeah. people to get them off of stuff or to get away from them. Like, I'm going to fear you run the other way around. And you fear someone is like, me. <laughs> like, no, you are supposed to run away. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is, uh, again, like my, the old death shot number three. Uh, just on regular death shot. Like, I use that all the time to get people off of points. Uh, and I think, like, if. If we still had a fear like that that was ranged and like you would be using it to get people off of points from like a distance, then having chill on that I think would be bad. Uh, but I guess with like more melee style combat, it's not it's not a huge problem. Um, 
but there are there are definitely there are definitely still situations where I would probably rather not have the chill uh, on the fear, just like a couple. But I don't know. I think it, I think it's I think I think it probably the benefits kind of balance out. So I'm not like mad about it, but it's it's okay. Okay, Inks, do you have any any passing thoughts on this? Shivers of dread. No, I mean I think it's uh, I think it's it's in line with uh, Reaper. I think it fits. Okay, in that case, cold shoulder, which means the chill you apply lasts longer, and you take fifteen percent less damage from uh, chilled chilled targets. I, I think this uh, I think this ties in very well with what the Reaper is supposed to do. Uh, it's supposed to be a little bit more of a, of a brawler and be hard to stop and hard to take down. And obviously, you know, you, the, the dream situation is you have chill on your opponent as often as possible anyway, maybe even 100% of the time if you can, uh, if you can manage that. So this is going to make you harder to kill and ma just makes your chill last long. So I think there's nothing to complain about here. I think this is a, a potent uh, minor thingy. <laughs> yeah. That's, Any other thoughts? That's that's pretty much my thought too. Yeah, I mean it's needed mitigation. Mm. All right then. Again through this, augury of death. Your shouts recharge faster for each foe they hit, which is seven percent per foe. This would be really useful if they make the little fuckers explode. <laughs> 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 yeah. Otherwise, I don't see its usefulness. Mm -hmm. To be honest, someone mentioned in chat that with the chill to the bone, that can take the cooldown down to seventy-eight seconds, and that sounds about right. Which that's that's a decent cooldown on that. Uh, there's nothing to complain about. But yeah. If you can, okay. if if you can, yeah, if you can hit all, if you can hit five people with that shout, uh, and get like down to a seventy-eight cooldown from one hundred and twenty seconds, I think that's pretty good. But yeah, I don't know. I don't yeah, know how much I'll be using shouts other than the elite shout. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And you have to take. It's not that it's bad. It's just not as com uh, competitive as relentless pursuit. Because I can understand Chili mm. Nova being good in PVE, but if you don't take relentless pursuit, then you're just going to yeah, get what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Mm. I, I think I think yeah, I think unfortunately it doesn't it doesn't have what it takes in the trait arena to compete with its uh, compete with its other friends. So in that case let's talk about <laughs> well, seeing as we've already, we've already talked a little bit about relentless pursuit and how we think it's awesome and but, um, well, a must take in, in PvP really, uh if you're yeah. planning on using a reaper. So let's finish off the adapts with chilling nova. Critical hits against chilled foes causes an explosion that chills adjacent foes. And currently, they, they've said they're going to play around with it a little bit, but it can only occur three times in ten seconds. It chills for one and a half seconds and does 103 base damage. Uh, I mean, it's obviously, it's a damage buff uh, from just, just hitting things normally, and obviously you can spread your condition that makes you do more damage anyway. Uh, to other things, so uh, the damage doesn't seem that high though to me. So, or it, maybe, or, or am I just being stupid here? And would it, if, if it was more damage, would it make this just completely ridiculous? No, I think, in my opinion, this is a very important trait if it's used in a certain playstyle. At the moment, when you're doing AOE damage, especially in a lot in PvE, in a lot of locations, there are a lot of AOE mobs. The mobs run all over the place with no, absolutely, they're like crazy. And you don't have AOE taunt. And we're not going to get AOE taunt and having AOE taunt is going to really ruin the entire, the entire uh, like dynamic and on the fly combat. It's just like another way of stacking, which is even, I mean, I guess it would be better because the camera won't get weird in the corner all the time, <laughs> but it's still bad. But now if you AOE, peop if you AOE mobs, you have a way to slow them down and you cannot perma immobilize them because then it's weird again but the combat slows down so combo uh, AOE uh, 
you know what I want to say. AOE, you get to, to benefit from the full extent of your AOE spells. Mobs they just don't just go all over the place. And it will actually remove a lot of the need for stacking in corners. I hope we cannot do that, but it will give an alternative. You don't have to stack in corner to AOE mobs, you just slow them down a bit. Yeah. Yeah, so it's really, really good for PvE. Like, very good. Mm. A good point from uh, Galk the Bloody. This guy's got some amazing points. He points out that um, the, the hit, the trait, um, this get, generates an extra hit for granting might with the trait that grants you might when you hit someone chill. So, I mean, this is potentially, you're going to get an awful lot of might out of this. I uh, think as you obviously generate a lot of hits out of this. So you can eat very, very quickly, stack up all that might. So I, I think, yeah, this is very, very strong in yeah, and about that, killing have, the things that aren't players. We have too much might generation potential, in my opinion. I can already, in a lot of my, in two separate builds, I can stay like almost 25 stacks of might solo. And I have even more might now. I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with all of it. I don't think it's needed <laughs> that much. But, hmm. Okay. Well, shall we talk about some other traits then? Yep. Chilling Force, which is just the, uh, just, the for just the trait we were just talking about. Striking a chill foe grants might and life force. Five seconds of might and 1% life force. I mean, this is going to make a lot of life force because in, in situations, and, and obviously might as well, you can have someone chilled, a very high uptime of chill on, on people, and with every, every strike, and there's no cap on this as well, there's no internal cooldown or anything like that. Uh, so, I don't know, this is, this is quite scary, I think. This is an awful lot of might. In my opinion, um, it can work if you go with a really fast attack speed weapon like dagger and you stack your might and life force really stack it uh, really high really fast and <coughs> <coughs> then finish with the um, sigil of rage because otherwise you're lacking the precision from decimated def decimate defenses mm. but if you stack a lot of might on a chill target, uh, you from a chill target, and then you switch benefit from 100% crit chance anyway, then yeah, that might work. Otherwise, 50% uh, critical strike, the potential for 50% critical strike chance is always going to be higher than 25 stacks of might, unless you go hybrid. But then again, if you go hybrid, it's weird. I already, I already scouted out the possibility of making a hybrid with a, with a great sword, and I can only make an AOE hybrid. There's no potential for sing single target in it. A very nice AOE target, uh, AOE hybrid with burning and burning and more burning and more burning, but still no potential for single target. So mm. I don't know. I mean, it's kind of. I always talked about not having the same thing. Uh, the the it's like choosing be between a bottle of coke and another bottle of coke. But um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know actually, because we don't do that bad with life force generation as it is. I mean, we do uh, when we are versus multiple. It doesn't scale. Our life force generation doesn't scale, especially with the internal cooldowns on uh, what you call it, spectral armor. Mm. But this doesn't scale either. So I don't know. Maybe it will get changed until release. I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, they they were. They were being, they were implying that they are still playing with the numbers on this one, and you know maybe giving it a cool down, maybe limiting the amount of times it can happen. Uh, in say in ten seconds again, use the same mechanic as chilling Nova. Uh, so I'm, I mean, I think I'd be quite surprised if this didn't get tweaked a little bit uh, before release. Maybe if they add some. You, oh. Maybe if they add some, what you call them, the little fuckers that explode. <laughs> the jagged horror. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it also summons a jagged horror. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this will never get old. <laughs> okay. Uh, Inks, do you have any, any comments on this one? Yeah, you know, people in chat are saying, and I, I believe Robert did say something about this probably getting nerfed a bit. Um, 
we we kind of mentioned it, but the you know the five seconds of might maybe that's going to be three seconds or something. I don't know, but uh, I mean this is extremely strong. You know, giving it giving it an internal <coughs> cooldown might be a mistake, like people in chat are talking about. Um, so I'm not sure how I would feel about like you know maybe you can apply three might and then you got to wait ten seconds. I you know I, I think that's bad. I don't I don't really like that so much. Um, yeah. I don't know. It, it's really strong the way it is. I think it probably will see at least a small nerf. But uh, <laughs> hopefully not too much of a nerf because I like this one a lot. Mm. All right then. How about Soul Eater, uh, which causes your greatsword attacks to steal health, and when Gravedigger hits a foe, all other greatsword skills recharge by 3%. <laughs> <laughs> This so is, will, it's ridiculous. This is good. <laughs> you think? Yeah, just put down your dark field from Greatsword 4 and start spinning on them and steal health. <laughs> Recharge your dark field and get leeching bolts. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's such a good trait. That's, yeah. uh, that's another key element <laughs> if you're going to have an AoE tanker. AoE chill, AoE sustain. Yeah. I hope aggro yeah. system, the aggro system gets better. I I hope mm. it, I don't know, sticks more to some targets, at least a little bit. Because... Mm. Yeah. And, I mean, if you combine this with uh, some of the, the blood magic, the blood magic traits, I mean, with all the, all the vampires and you can get there on all the hits as well, I mean... Exactly. You, you can just be stealing an awful lot of health from people, and of course, healing yourself in the process. Life, I, life cycle. I just, I really love that mechanic. I think it's a fantastic mechanic. Uh, oh, sorry, Nemesis. Go ahead. And it scales. That's the thing. You need scaling stuff to deal with AOE encounters, AOE situations. Unlike, unlike life or generation, which doesn't scale mostly, this this thing actually scales, which might make um, might re might allow the. How do I say this? Uh, life force might remain more for single target, and uh, vampirism might be the answer for AOE, in AOE encounters okay. and stuff. That might be something, because you have to take into consideration uh, outside sources of heal. Because if you get like over uh, six or seven hundred passive healing, then people are not going to bring you down that easily. Like <laughs> per second, you can even get. If you're lucky, you can get 1k. I remember I used I made the build once that did... I forgot how much. Anyway, 400 something, I think. <coughs> with this, you can break 600 with new runes, new, uh, new sieges, new stuff like that. You can easily get to 600 with some passives from Guardian and Elementalist. We're looking at 900 passive, which in 10 seconds is 9k, 20 seconds is 18k. That's... Jeez. That could be, yeah, what you, this could we, actually be a bunker. Looking at this with so much yeah. healing, that could be a bunker. Lifesteal bunker. Yeah. Hmm. Especially with, uh, you know, the fact that it will, you can stay in Death Shroud while this is happening as well. And heal while in Death Shroud. Yeah. 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 And yeah. the thing is, Death Shroud is, uh, the bunker will not be that effective uh, when there's few people because you cannot see fun off of them so you stay in that shroud during that time and as soon as more people come out you rely on your your siphoning mm. and that's if that if something like this is actually viable that's actually very smart to whoever thought about it that's like how do we make scaling defense without actually restructuring the entire way death shroud functions because if they make death shroud scale that's that's going to change all the skills that give death shroud, uh, give life force, or whatever. So that's actually very smart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I like that these, uh, not so much in the adept line, but the definitely the master line. There isn't one of these that I don't want to take, and I think that's, uh, and that's a. I wish the adept line was kind of like that. You know, the adept line maybe needs a little bit of work, but. 
the master line, all of these, there's definitely situations where there's builds that you can think of or combinations you can think of where it's like, I, I would love to have Chilling Force or I'd love, I could definitely use Soul Eater in this way. Uh, Decimate Defenses, which we haven't talked about just yet, you know, definitely has a place. So I think it's, I think it's nice that uh, all of these options seem like they're viable. Uh, the the masters are highly competitive with each other. Uh, I think all of them have uh, certainly have a place. Uh, especially, oh well, I mean this one, the the next one and final one, Harvey needs an introduction. Decimate defenses, <laughs> <laughs> striking a foe with vulnerability increases critical hit chance per stack. So if they've got twenty five vulnerability stacks, suddenly you've got 50% extra critical chance. I mean, to me, this just seems like you're going to have builds that revolve around this, and you can just completely throw away precision. Uh, you, you, there's no real need to have this, especially with the, um, what is it called? Uh, fo well, yeah, death perception. Death perception, death that's perception. right. Yeah. Uh, increases, yeah. So you've got an another 50% critical chance while on Death Shroud. So if they've got 25% uh, 25 vulnerability stacks, and you're in death trial, suddenly you've got 100% crit. With, and that's, you know, with no precision. You have no need for precision in this build. I think this is a, this is a very strong, a very strong trait in, in an awful lot of different situations. Uh, I think what's even what more interesting, I think what's even more interesting about this trait is, you know, right now we're talking about just the Necro by himself, how much vulnerability he can stack, which is a good amount. Um, and it seems like most classes are going that direction. It seems like most classes are now have this ability, at least so far, to stack a lot of vulnerability. But if you think about this in a party-wide buff in, in a five-player team or something, dragon hunters can now instantly stack 25 stacks of vulnerability, even if it is short duration. Uh, engineers have always been good at stacking vulnerability. Uh, there's just so many classes now that... You know, I'm missing a lot of classes, obviously, but there's so so many classes now that still stack vulnerability extremely quickly on top of the the uh, the necromancer that it it's almost going to be it's going to be a rare situation where you don't have 25 stacks of vulnerability on something. That's the thing. Maybe the reason we now have such we have increased capacity for stacking vulnerability. Maybe it's required because you will be also required to break combat a lot. Maybe it's that challenging that you have to break combat a lot and by the time you get back, they don't want to make players, okay, now we have to rebuff, now we have to re-debuff. You break combat and you get back and it's still there and you can continue. It's all about having fun, not constantly segmenting the combat. Like, okay, we go behind this corner, we, we rebuff, we burst. Okay, we move, we go to this corner, we rebuff, we burst. It's so frustrating. Yeah. All right. In that case, should we talk about some grandmaster traits? Let's do it. Let's let's do it. I think we're we're ready for it now. <laughs> Lighter's boom. <laughs> the one that and potatoes yeah. didn't understand. <laughs> the lore gain reference, right? Yeah. When you gain a boom, if you are in Reaper's shroud, gain health instead. And obviously, I think the, the obvious synergy here is with uh, Chilling Force. Uh, you can, I mean, imagine if you were hitting five chilled targets at once with this while you're in Death Shroud. I mean, the, well, that, the, the amount of health you can get out of this would be pretty insane. <coughs> and you get might from the, uh, from the Death Shroud auto attack anyways. Mm. So, yeah, it's like... <laughs> It's like altruistic healing and empowering might that doesn't suck. That's like basically <laughs> what it is. <laughs> hmm. But uh, that's it's, it's it's really funny. Like I don't even being able to heal while you're in death shroud just so easily. Like in in well, sorry, in like your reaper shroud, like you grant you generate might so quickly with the auto attack because of how fast it is, and being able to heal off of that and like if you if you need to build up might really quickly like if you have if you're able to do that outside like you have your uh 
your shout that makes if you're targeting five people. Uh, it gives you 20 stacks of might. If you build up your death shroud, your life force in like an instant with that, that's mm. crazy. That's awesome. Like you can you can immediately just go into like uh, death shroud and execute people, or go into death shroud and like build up your health or like anything really. It's it's awesome. I yeah. really like it. Yeah. What What do you think? What do you think, Inks? I mean, um, ASCII uh, in in chat basically said it. You know, Reaper's Might, Chilling Force, Sigil of Strength, Rune of Holbrek, and Blader's Boom. <laughs> the potential is absolutely ridiculous with this. And, uh, yeah, I love it. I absolutely love Blader's Boon. Would you agree, Nemesis? Yeah, I mean, it's... Except for World v. World, where you need Reaper's Onslaught so you can jump and execute people so they rage about it. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I still have that dream about jumping in a Zerg I always wanted to do. Uh, <laughs> it's like the best one to take, because uh, if we are going to go down to Deathly Chill, uh, Chill does damage, additional damage when falls below health threshold. Now I have one question, is the chill going to scale off of condition damage? Because then it's really weird, because nothing else in here scales off of condition damage. And it's basically useless, and if it doesn't scale, the damage is too small anyway. So it's between yeah. Blighter's Boon and Reaper's Onslaught, and, and you're got, not going to take Reaper's Onslaught in PV or PvP anyway. So this is basically the Grandmaster trade to go. Mm. So. Let's let's you know. Let's segue into deathly chill then. Uh, see, you you think the damage is too low on this, or uh, or maybe you you want it to scale with power and not condition damage. I think it if 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 it, if it scales with power, then it's too strong. As it is, it's too weak. <laughs> and if it scales with condition damage, it makes no sense. So I don't know. Well, you could, Do you think it just you can reduce the scaling with power. You can make it scale very small. Maybe. Yeah. That so, so you think maybe a, a base damage increase would be the best way to go here? That could be possible too, yeah. Yeah. Or maybe if you get that, those little fuckers that explode. <laughs> <laughs> deathly jagged horror. Yeah. <laughs> chill summons a deathly... Uh, chill summons a jagged horror to attack your enemy. <laughs> that would be really good. That would be a lot of jagged horrors. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Inks, enlighten us. What do you think about Deathly Chill? Yeah, I don't know. It's not, you know, out of the three that we have here, uh, Blighter's Boon being my favorite, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not exactly, I can't, I don't know whether it's the damage or the fact that it feels a bit odd to me, but something is off with this trait. Uh, it's either not strong enough or it's just not enticing when you, when you, you know, match it up with the others. Uh, you know, for for funsies, I guess I, I think it has. I think some people might take it to play around with it. Uh, you know, maybe maybe I'm just missing something here, but I don't see the point uh, when you compare it to the other two. Mm. Just me, Speaking maybe. The other two. What about Reaper's onslaught? Attack faster while in Reaper's shroud. Killing a foe recharges death's charge, and the attacks being is 15%. So, given that the auto attack is already pretty fast, you're just spinning this thing around constantly with, with this trait. Uh, it's just this is the Dervish simulator. Like once again, this Guild Wars 2 is now the premier Guild Wars 1 simulator. You can relive your Dervish experience with the Reaper. I mean, in some respects, this is just 15% more damage while uh, you're in Reaper Shroud, and that's good. Yeah, I, being able I like oh, it. Well, no, I I have a feeling I'll probably end up using this trait in PvE uh, just for the attack speed to build up might faster. Especially, like, if I, if I wander into a pug group or something, or maybe if I'm trying to solo some stuff. Having, being able to build up might a lot quicker and being, like, that much more self-sufficient, I really, really enjoy that. Like, I've always kind of enjoyed that aspect of Death Shroud builds, just being able to generate your own might. Granted, it is a little slow currently with how slow Life Blast is, but 
being able to do that like already faster from Reaper Shroud and then again another 15% faster, I think that's really cool. Um, I like this trade a lot too. I don't know that I would really use Blighter's Boon too much in PvE. I might prefer this one, but I don't know. We'll have to see. Well, I mean, obviously, I know, I know you are intend to use this trait a lot, Nemesis. Uh, but do you have any more more thoughts on it? Uh, Go ahead. No, nothing that hasn't been said so far. Okay, Inks. Yeah, I agree. You know, same with Brazil. Uh, Reaper's on slot PVE. I think uh, this is my choice there. Uh, you know, some people just just to address it. Some people were saying that I'm I'm totally out of my mind with Deathly Chill. Uh, because uh, it matches up really well with condition builds. Uh, that may very well be. I don't play Condition Mancer, so I apologize. I don't have a whole lot of experience playing Condition Mancer because I play Power Necro. Even, you know, in, in World vs. World, I play Power Wells. In PvP, I play a Power Necro. And in PvE, you know, Power again. So I just feel like, and I could be wrong on this because I, I lack experience. You guys can correct me. But it feels like Necros, at least currently, and this could be changing, but it feels like condition Necros don't stack conditions fast enough, or at least in relation to other condition classes that are stacking conditions. In the thing is with condition, because I used to play condition a lot, and I play hybrid a lot, especially in fractals. Um, you don't have the setup to actually benefit from condition stacking. Because you don't stack fast enough because, it, I mean, it's a flawed system at the moment because of the condition bleeding cap. You are not supposed to stack 25 on your own because there's so many skills that stack by accident. And Epidemic, uh, I can be FKing and only hit ep Epidemic. And if the, the monster has all the conditions in the game, I benefit from it benefits from my condition duration, my condition damage. So hitting one epidemic could literally spread a lot of mobs, like instantly kill them. It does like uh, 3,750 from 25 stacks of bleeding, uh, DPS and another 2,000 something from confusion, and another 500 from burning, and another a lot. Anyway, it stacks up to like 7 or 8k DPS times 5 targets, which is 40k DPS for the first second of epidemic and it slowly goes down but that's like the highest dps in the game i'm not sure about mm. that but anyway someone, it's insanely someone big <laughs> it's insanely mm. big the the scale the, the epidemic thing the problem is we don't have any good place to use it because the monsters in aoe go all over the place people don't release condition builds because of the bleeding stack on a single target so yeah uh, the problem is with this, uh, you said some people said in the chat that it scales with condition builds and stuff like that. Yeah, that scales with condition builds. But we don't have anything, like I said before, we don't have anything that works around that. And I go into, I go into an entire trait line and get the greatsword, which doesn't, which doesn't do that much besides chilling in terms of conditions. Just to actually, it might work. No, I just realized that you can add burning with the great sword, so it might work. Right? Huh. Yeah. Mm. Well, um, some guys in chat were saying that it's 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 kind of odd that it killing a foe recharges a skill that already has a, a short cooldown, and that maybe it would make sense if it say took three seconds off all the cooldowns. In in the in Reaper Shroud. I mean, what what do you guys think about that? I think it's going to severely modify a lot of the calculations in terms of balance that were done already. If there's if they're going to take three seconds of all of the skills, then you have to remake all the damage values. So, even if it's a good idea, I'm not sure anyone is going to make the calculations for it uh, at the moment. Hmm. Inks, uh, how do you what do you think about Reaper's onslaught? Yeah, you know, I've, I've already said I think it has its place in PVE, and uh, I think this is the trait that you'll probably. I mean, we don't know for sure, but at least right now, if this was to go live tomorrow, this is the trait that I would take in PVE. I think. 
Mm. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I would say that would be probably the best. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, is is there disagreement from from, from Nemesis and Brother? No. From either of no. you two? I don't know. No, no it's just yeah. the way you were looking, you were thinking, no. what is what is this idiot talking about? <laughs> I'm going to go leave mean comments on his YouTube channel now. <laughs> yeah, I love those. those <laughs> oh, Inks, you, you found him out. All those people who leave mean comments, it's just Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm. All right, guys, that actually uh, rounds off all, all of the new stuff. Uh, but... Do we, we have, yeah, should we take some, some time for questions, maybe? Yeah, seems we've got some very wise, very wise men here today. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them in chat, and I will direct them at people who know more than me. <clears throat> and Nemesis may have had some questions from, uh, I don't know if you already got some questions from your YouTube channel or not, but or we can just wait in chat. Uh, yeah. I, I'm guessing I'm going to answer those questions in the comment section. Okay. Okay. Because I, I was thinking like, not everyone is going to be at the right time at the, to understand mm. them. Yeah. There's going to be questions on, on, as I upload this anyway, so I'm just going to take the live ones now. Why is Brazil in your video? That'll be the main <laughs> question. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> well, to be honest, if I'm going to take a small, uh, take a, I don't know the word, <laughs> to talk about like 30 seconds about this, when you wrote, when you uh, sent me the message and said, uh, maybe you don't like me and stuff like that, I was like, well, a lot of people have told me that you don't like me, so I don't, I don't know all of this stuff. But you were really polite, so I'm like, okay, we can have a ch conversation. And a lot of people seem to think like we hate each other. And to be honest, I don't even know you that well. I mean, I don't know you, except for the fact that you're Brazilian. I think you make warrior videos. I'm not sure. <laughs> All kinds of videos. But I do <laughs> so a lot of videos. I don't <laughs> hate anyone. I, I, I don't hate... I can't hate people I don't even know. And I don't hate people over a game. So... I dislike certain okay, guys. things, but that's about it. We've got questions, questions, questions. Uh, and yeah, I think questions. a very, very prominent one is, will Necro be more more viable in high-level fractals or dungeons? <laughs> Brazil plus! Exclamation mark. So I will... I'll talk about high-level stuff first. I'm going to mention... I'll talk about different tiers of speed clearing, I think, and I'll talk about kind of pug groups and stuff like that. In, like, high-tier record runs with very, like, specific rule sets and stuff like that, uh, where, like, stacking might quickly, stuff like that, stealth, all kinds of, like, mechanics have to be used in very good synchronization with everybody in the group. I don't think we'll see Necromancer in any record run videos anytime soon, even after Reaper, as much as I would love to. Uh, the damage output sounds like it's going to be great. But in record runs, I don't think the damage alone is going to justify replacing a Thief, because Thief does very high damage, mostly single target, but Thief has stealth. Thief has a lot of blast finishers. Uh, Elementalist has very, very high damage output, has fire fields, has fury and might generation for the entire party, stuff like that. And I don't know that you would necessarily, just because of a really high damage output, replace an elementalist. Uh, warrior, warrior has banners, and banners are a massive, massive team DPS increase. So I don't know that you would necessarily replace a warrior just because of high damage either, like a record run. But the other spots, like you have, I guess now people kind of fill in extra spots with elementalists or thieves a lot, uh, or maybe a ranger. I don't know. I, I still think like a ranger might be better, or maybe more elementalists, I don't know, just for even faster might stacking for like more fire field uptime, because that's just kind of, I don't know. But in like... What I would say more casual kind of speed runs, the stuff that I kind of do now, like with my guild at night, we'll do dungeons and we'll just kind of go through uh, and whatever. 
I will. I play Necromancer pretty often there now. I really enjoy playing the class there, and I'll just go through. Uh, there are some people in my guild that would rather me not play Necromancer whenever mm -hmm. I play with them, and just out of kind of respect for them or mutual agreement or whatever, I usually play something else. Uh, but I think, I don't know, in a situation like that, and maybe like an organized group something, Reaper has... I think it'll probably have higher damage output, so it won't be as, I don't know, whatever. I think in, like, pug runs, maybe slower runs where people aren't concerned with speed, stuff like that, uh, I think it's great. I think being more self-sufficient, stacking might faster for yourself, where uh, you may not be depending... You won't have to... I guess the idea... My idea of kind of playing Necromancer and pugs is usually not having to worry about other people doing things for you, because you can do most of it on yourself. You'll be able to stack vulnerability faster, benefiting everyone else. Your damage is going to be great. Uh, you can, if you think you need more survivable gear, like if you think you uh, don't trust pugs enough for them to like not get you killed, you can play with Valkyries or Cavaliers and benefit from the uh, precision from vulnerability, stuff like that. The uh, I don't even remember what the trait was called now. It's escaping me. But uh, Decimate Defenses... I think that's cool. In mm. like uh, lower levels, lower levels of dungeons, people that are new to dungeons or PVE, I, I think it'll be good there because again, it's really self-sufficient. My hope for this, and it may sound strange for me to say this, I think that it is going to probably reduce a lot of necrobancer hate that people get because I think the damage divergence and like people's perception of necromancers doing bad damage and whatever, I think a lot of that is going to go away once Reaper gets released into the game because, honestly, the damage just looks pretty ridiculous and all you have to do is just look at the traits for it. You don't even have to. And even, not necessarily even that, I think just the fact that they have a greatsword now, I think people kind of associate greatsword with just dealing more damage. So I think that alone will, like, oh, they have a greatsword, they're doing damage. So <laughs> might help too. I don't know, but those are those are kind of my thoughts on it. Yeah, would you, you would you agree with that, Nemesis? Well, the way fractals are right now, uh, probably he's probably right because even in fractals, stacking works, and when you have stacking, you have uh, buffs that scale up way out of proportions, and Necromancer doesn't bring enough buffs. It's uh, it's not that you are slowing down the team. It's going to be like a minute, two minutes tops. And uh, to be honest, if you're not making like the perfect run with pugs, you're actually carrying the team. It's a lot of the time I was like the only one left alive. But in record times when everyone is playing perfect, buffs scale way out of proportions and you don't bring buffs. If scaling gets removed, then it's totally different because we have to take in consideration DPS uptime. And that's something we really have to take in, into consideration. With stacking, with corner stacking, we pretty much have 100% DPS uptime. DPS uptime is non-existent. It's not even a factor. And it's been going on for such a long time that people don't even understand the notion of DPS uptime. Or attack speed for that matter. <laughs> People just see a number like, ah, I do this DPS. No, my friend, that's a number of a skill that has two second channeling duration and an aftercast. You don't do that DPS. So, yeah. Uh, Inks, you, I know you don't main a Necro, but would you, yeah. do you think uh, it's a possibility to see a few Necros in? Some maybe a little bit high level and, and not getting immediately kicked from fractal. Well, you know, here's the thing. Number one, I'm I'm not the I'm not the numbers guy. I know Brazil. Uh, I know DNT like the keys uh, is really good with the numbers. I know she crunches like a lot of that stuff, right? So, you know, just at a glance, uh, if you don't need reflex, and currently, I I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the the current you know meta is replace guardian with ranger. In that situation, if you don't need Reflex, uh, you know, perhaps Necro's damage could, you know, equal that of Ranger's, maybe even better. I don't, I don't really know. It really depends on the changes. So, so maybe there's a slight spot there, but 
and this is going to be an unpopular opinion. A lot of people are not going to like this. The problem with current pugs in general, or current dungeons in general, is there are a lot of people who think that they are these top speed-clearing groups. And the truth of the matter is they're not. You can put on all the Berserker armor you want, but if you're not playing that you know, set of armor properly, if you're not blinding, if you're not dodging at the right time, if you're not avoiding those hits, then you're dead or on the ground doing no damage at all and you're totally useless. This is especially true for pugs. So it, it's odd to me that, you know, if you look at the best speed clearing guilds that are out there and the best compositions that are out there, Necromancer is not the only class that gets excluded from those runs. It's just unfortunate that because they don't have blast finishers, that because they don't have these uh, like banners or other things that share party support, they get this, they have this connotation attached to them that they just aren't providing enough help for the group. Which is not, you know, it, it's not exactly, that's not exactly true. In, in everyday runs, and I'm not talking about just casual runs, even runs where you make good progress or good timing through a dungeon, there's nothing wrong with taking a Necromancer. And uh, Reaper, for the most part, is going to, because of the damage that are going to be able to do, especially with the number two greatsword skill, um, I mean, I, I see no reason why they shouldn't have a place in, in regular, normal runs. Especially yeah. if you wait 15 minutes to get your party going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's... You mentioned that in your latest video. That's actually yeah. something that I think is funny because... And it ha it's happening and it's really detrimental for new players. Because new yeah. players don't know anything. They just go in, try to play, and they just get cursed at because they're not meta. And if they are left in the run, they have to follow these weird steps and stay in weird locations with the camera going all like this. And the first impression, if I would go into this game with that first impression, I'd be like, what the fuck is this? So, yeah, anyway, another time. I think, I think there is a, a wider problem with certain members of the community right now. There's, you know, there's a depressing amount of elitism, you know, oh, well, you know. And, and like you said in your, in your latest video, you know, uh, you, the, the, in the time they've been waiting for their perfect, awesome super group, you could have already done it. Uh, it with, with uh, you know, it doesn't make that much difference unless you are going for the, the the ultimate speed runs using all the filthy exploits and stuff like that so yeah <laughs> how okay next question from galk the bloody uh what rune sets do you think being good i mean for for me i mean it just seems like rune of ice is a is a pretty obvious choice in uh, pve i'm still going to use strength runes i want yeah, my duration it, Mm. In P in PVE, I mean, it's not really going to change that much because you, you you need the runes with the aggr all the aggressive stats on, and as you, know, you want to get as many damage multipliers as you can, as long as as many damage multipliers as you can get your hands on, and Rune of Ice doesn't do that. But I think in in PVP, I think Rune of Ice is is going to yeah. see some use. M maybe Rune of Granth as well, but maybe not so much. What do you think, Nemesis? Um. I'm under the impression that runes will change. Oh. So anything we okay. say now will be like, nah. <laughs> that's that's so, true. Because yeah, if the gear they changes, did, they, the runes have to change as well. Right. They did say at some point that some, not, I mean, maybe not all of them, but some of the runes would change and we would see new runes and sigils as well uh, that we haven't seen before. Now this may have to do with some of the new things like taunt and resistance and such. Uh, we just... We don't know enough at this point, I guess. Um, you know, PVE, I'm with Brazil. I mean, right now, if if this goes live right now, you know, a lot of this is like we don't know the future of HOT exactly. We don't know all of the details. But, you know, if this goes live tomorrow, let's say, strength runes are a good bet, I think, uh, especially with all the might we can stack. You want to you wanna keep that rolling for PVE, so... Uh, I know Sigils of Ice seen a jump. I'm sure people will try to use them. Will they be the most effective? We'll see. I don't know. Okay. I mean, uh, here's how about how do you think the Great Sword as a weapon stacks up against the other Necromancer weapons? Well, 
Should I go? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I hope it's not a clear decision. I hope, like I said before, we use greatsword if you want to do AOE. In PvP, we use greatsword if we want to do like uh, the executioner. I don't want the other weapons to be obsolete. And I wasn't expecting when I saw we're going to get a new specialization and a new weapon. I wasn't expecting it to fix, to magically fix our, all of our problems and be used in every single build. I'm actually glad we have the greatsword weapon attached to the trait line. So we cannot use the greatsword in every single build. Because people are going to try to do it anyway. Now they can't. Mm -hmm. So um, I hope it will have its place. And I hope more than that, that it will have an equivalent place to some other places. Yeah. Okay. Brazil, what do you think? Yeah, I, I really like daggers. I like daggers a lot. Uh, Dagger focus and dagger warhorn, uh, and I don't know. Depending on like how PVE goes, and also axe. Like if the axe training still works in Death Shroud, uh, I I'll probably use like greatsword axe focus for my weapon set in PVE most of the time, and I uh, will. I imagine what will end up happening is like I'll Death Shroud with axe on for the first most of the fight, build up might and stuff. And then after the boss or enemies, whatever, start to drop below 50%, probably uh, go into Greatsword, start using Executioner, uh, start building that up. And then whenever it gets below 25, go into Death Shroud, uh, Death Shroud 5, then swap back out and just Executioner loop again. So that's, I can, I imagine that's probably going to be like more or less the rotation for that. I don't know though. Um, because okay. I, I, yeah, that, that's that's how I imagine it going. Inks, do you do you plan on using and using the great sword for the Reaper? Yeah, I mean, at least initially, I I think definitely I will. You know, uh, there, there a lot of people in chat were saying earlier, and I think this is a big kind of a misconception with some people that they feel like you have to use whatever weapon the specialization gives you, Chronomancer shield or you know Necromancer great sword or longbow on. Dragon Hunter. Um, you don't have to. I just think that those weapons synergize well with that trait line. Uh, so I'll definitely be trying to use it, but there will definitely be people who find specs, maybe even very viable specs that don't use Greatsword necessarily. But like Nemesis was saying, I hope that all weapons find a viability spot so that you're not just like, you have to take Greatsword, you have to take, you know, Axe Warhorn or something. Um, I'd like to see a bunch of the weapons be viable so that you can interchange those and using the same weapon gets boring after you know a while so okay here's another question uh, is there any possibility that deathly chill in its uh, current state could have any any decent potential or synergy with the necromancer's toolkit say again what Definitely chill. If it has any synergy yeah. with what Necromancer currently has. Yeah. You know, I think we already talked about this. Uh, you know, people are advocating that Deathly Chill is going to work well with a Condition Mancer or could work well with a Condition Mancer. We kind of talked it'll... about that earlier, right? Might be the extra, uh, like I said, hybrid. I'm all about hybrids. Uh, I was speculating around going off of Spite and into Soul Reap, uh, into Reaper, and see if I can make a hybrid which which stacks AoE burning on Death Shroud one, and you might uh, add the chill on top of that to keep people on you, and you make like this condition uh, uh, progressively adding more burning, more chilling to keep the burning the burning targets with you. And you can get 50% of your damage as healing, as condition damage into healing. And make this sort of like melee afflictioner that takes mobs with you and sustains himself off of the conditions. Which will make for very interesting farming because you can burn, chill, burn, chill and bring groups together and stuff like that. And finish them off and really be sustainable. But other than that and... I'm just saying some things I just thought about. Don't quote me on that. I'm not sure it's viable. It's a long way. But I'm saying if it would be viable, it would be in that sense. Now, it has to... It matters... Um, 
it has to have a place in PV because if you don't have enough mobs or the situation to use something like that, you cannot use it even if you make it. Okay. Uh, any thoughts on that, Inks? Or oh, no, sorry, Brazil. Inks has already said something. Uh, I I like. I've always kind of liked the idea of like condition damage builds and fractals. But there, I think Fractal 38 is the one that like converts conditions into boons and stuff. And there are kind of places where it doesn't work. But um, a long time ago, like when we used to do Dredge Fractal at like Fractal level 80, it would take so long to kill all of the mobs with power. And we started playing around with like engineers in there, with like because engineers do a lot of condition damage just kind of naturally. And if you kind of use Rampager's armor or whatever, it was it noticeably helped just having one party member switch to like a more condition damage base build. It was it was it was cool. Um, the dredge you didn't have to worry about critting them for like one k damage and whatever. So it was it was kind of fun. And like there are also fun little places like Moss Man taking condition damage when he's stealthed and just, I don't know stuff like that. Um, and I. In PvE and in dungeons a lot, like especially like if I'm soloing a raw or whatever, I really like condition damage builds there. Uh, I normally just do warrior because it can generate bleeds and burning really, really quickly. But if you can generate chill that does damage and burning stacks and whatever with Doomfire, uh, I don't know, that, that'll that be fun. Uh, I had a Necromancer solo build that I played with for a while when Sinister Armor came out. And the Unholy Feast on Scepter number 3 scales per, like, it does more damage per condition on a target. Um, so, I don't know, like, uh, maybe a hybrid solo build build. That, that might be fun. I don't know. But chilling, doing damage, I think that's, I think that's useful. It's something I want to play around a lot with when it comes out. Okay, then. How... How does everyone here think that the Reaper will hold up in 1v1? Uh, Brutal 4-0 is particularly concerned with uh, dagger pistol thieves with all the constant blinds and interrupts. Uh, and Mesmer, but also, again, because of all the interrupts. And Longbow Ranger, because of how, how easily they can keep distance away from you. And I think, I think that's a really good point, especially with all the headshots. You know, your life is going to be ruined by all the head, headshots, just, I mean, it can quickly remove your stability, and it will interrupt your long wind-up skills. So, your high risk will be very high against thieves in a lot of situations. Yeah. Um, well, I think if the chill to the bone gives resistance, I I think that makes blind not effective against you. So, if I'm if understanding resistance correctly. I think that'll be cool, but the cooldown is really long on that skill, so I don't know. Um, maybe if... I, I don't know. It's, it's, that is a good point, because I really struggle a lot of times with Thieves and Rangers at higher levels of PvP. Uh, it, so I, I'm not sure. I think they'll probably still have an edge. Maybe not as much of an edge if you have your... Uh, Death Shroud number three stability stuff like that, and you can maybe keep them chilled a little bit, and put on weakness. I don't know, but I think they'll. I think those classes are just kind of designed to have a little bit of an edge over you, and you can't really you can't really do anything them with. You can't do anything to them from range as much because if your Death Shroud auto attack isn't ranged anymore, and you don't have a ranged fear really, so I don't know. Okay. Nemesis? I personally believe um, because you are this effective in AoE, uh, AoE damage plus executing people in team fights, I think not only you're not going to be as effective in 1v1s, you shouldn't be that effective in 1v1s. Uh, condition builds dominate 1v1s. The terror build really crushes people in 1v1s. If uh, the Reaper is going to be effective in team fights in vo in one v ones, it's like the go-to build. It kills diversity, so it's not going to be that effective in one v ones, and it shouldn't. That's my opinion. 
Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I would definitely agree. You know, it, it's I think it's pretty clear when you look at the the Reaper that one v ones or one v one fights in general, it's supposed to struggle. That's kind of the point. That's kind of the counter to the Reaper. Uh, besides the fact that you can kite it and you need to close that gap as quickly as you can. There's nothing wrong in structured PvP with having some hard counters or having counter play, uh, kind of kind of this rock paper scissors sometimes with classes. Sometimes a class is going to have an edge over you, and that's just going to suck when you have to fight. You know, like they're saying, a thief. You're going to want to avoid those, and or, you know, you're going to want to you're going to want to team up and and be with other people that can help you with those fights or, or peel off of you or something like that. Uh, there's going to be times where you dominate other people, and there's going to be times where other people dominate you. Uh, it's just the way PvP generally works. Um, sometimes it's going to suck. That's it, not to say that you won't have outs sometimes, but uh, yeah, it's uh, a concern, I mean, but it, it's it's a viable one. You're supposed to be concerned. Yeah, that's the sentiment I I would agree with. I mean, the game is is asymmetrical so in the end there's going to be it already count everything counts as something else in this game anyway that's why people play it you know based on the popularity of a certain thing people will start playing a lot of a certain thing so that certain thing is less effective so i don't think counters is is, is anything new or anything to to really worry about uh but i don't know what was that? i had a really good question here i lost it now i'm you know, gonna have to any, well i'm gonna have to leave pretty soon so maybe if we do uh, okay. like one more really good question. Should we do one more question? Yeah. Wait a second. One more, yeah, one more we can... Uh... Got to go to work. Uh, oh, big money. Yes, here we go. Uh, how do you think that the, uh, the, the vampiric aura and all the new blood, stuff, uh, all the new blood uh, traits, will that be good enough to make, give it some more support or support options in, in PvE situations? So, you, know, you know, applying party-wide life-stealing and... And stuff like that. In PvE situations? Yeah. If the lifesteal can <laughs> be abusable, yes. Otherwise, I don't know, like... It's gonna depend, like, if it scales, if it's just, like, a flat rate, and how often, I guess, I can proc, I'm not sure. Because, like, a long time ago before the, like, Omnom Berry Ghosts, had like an internal cooldown. That food was incredibly abusable. Like, yeah. Warrior would take offhand axe because that was a second heal skill, basically. Uh, not because it did good damage, just because it procced so many times, and you would get a proc on every single one of those hits. So, if you're able to find a way that, like, uh, you can hit quickly enough, and Necromancer can give each of those hits a Lifesteal proc? I don't know. It might be might be pretty good. Like, Ranger Sword hits really quickly. Uh, Thief hits really quickly. If 100 Blades gets procs on every single hit instead of just one of them, then I don't know. It That might be a thing. I, I'm not sure. It, it It's not going to be... I should clarify. It's not going to be to the healing. It's going to be to the mm. stealing health aspect. In PVE, at least, I don't. In high levels, I should say, in lower level groups, uh, if you are concerned with like keeping your party alive, or if you enjoy running through and taking a supporty role and healing people, then I think that might be an option for you. But in like really high level play, where damage is really all you're concerned about, the damage from the life steal will probably have to be abusable. I think that's kind of mm. how that's going to work. From out. from my perspective, that. That says it orally. It it all depends on how much damage yeah. the the uh, the life stealing do. And if it if it depends if it procs, it depends how much it procs. If it's just one hit, that's not really not really going to cut it unless it's a, a really big a bit of extra damage. But I really do hope they do something good with blood because if suddenly necromancers have this kind of supportive side, I think that's going to really help their their perception. From the community, you know, if they can do something to help their friends, even if it's not as good as, say, you know, the other, the other professions, just being able to provide something to the whole team will make people like them a lot more. But yeah, uh, Nemesis, what do you? Well, do you I feel about think this? Uh, a lot of people, uh, in general, they expect the necromancer to be buffed to compete with the other classes in the same way. 
And yeah. that I always say that's wrong. I'm just expecting the PV. I'm just expecting so PV fights where I as a necromancer with a really life siphoning build with a really self sustaining build, I could take like all the ads or do the ads in a room alone, guaranteeing my entire team DPS uptime somewhere else. And I have a usefulness in my own way in that particular fight in a very special way instead of constantly trying to give buffs or uh, banners or stuff like that. I mean, Warrior feels special that gives banners. A thief feels special that he can stealth an entire team and stuff like that. I want to feel special by standing somewhere with five mobs and constantly siphoning off of them. It's a different playstyle and just as Thief can stealth an entire team, I want to be able to do that and feel good mm. in my own way. If I ever feel the need to stealth an entire team, I'll go Thief. If I ever feel the need to put a lot of buffs, I'll go Warrior or whatever. Elementalist or whatever. But uh, yeah, that's my thing. It's uh, That's my, my point. It doesn't have to match the other classes. I don't want to play a Necromancer and feel like a crippled version of an Elementalist. Mm. Yeah, yeah I, th I think... That that is something I can really get behind. Having having something that only necromancers bring to the table is I think is really important, and I hope blood is that. And I, I you have oh, no go ahead. I, go ahead. And I really hope, I really hope the new PV because we are getting new PV. It's not going to be damage only. Even if it's mm. condition and power damage, I don't want to be damage only. There are many different trait lines there are 25 different sets of stats i want each and every one of those to have some functionality because it scales the diversity exponentially and that gives longer end game and more fun a lot more fun okay inks you have the final word on the final question uh, the final word on the final question yeah you know <coughs> I mean, honestly, we don't know enough. We, we we have a snippet of information about blood with what Robert said he is working on. Uh, we need to know more. Uh, my my other hope is that necromancers in general, not just the bloodline, but um, I would like to see tiny tweaks to all of the lines. Uh, so I hope that I hope that when he's looking at blood and redesigning the bloodline, that they make small changes everywhere because I felt I feel like uh, you guys can correct me because you play necromancers more than me but I feel like the necromancer community in general was not overly happy with the changes they've seen in the four hour live stream uh, a lot of classes got a lot of big sweeping changes engineers they got so many changes they're not even done with them yet and necromancers it just felt like they didn't make a ton of changes so I hope that, uh, you know, I know that Robert is still working on the Necromancer and, and he's going back to blood and the core trait lines there. And I hope that they take a look at all of the core trait lines and make little little tweaks and changes here and there. All right. Soul Reaping, Curses, and Power looks look pretty good. Look pretty good. Uh, soul uh, Death Magic is not quite there yet and uh, blood magic is only like if I don't know it's not it's tricky if if they buff it too much combined with uh, soul reaping and reaper it could scale some tank builds way out of proportion but as it is now it's sort of useless so they have to buff it just right yeah. I'm okay. excited to see what they do. <clears throat> I think we can all agree on that. Something to end on and all agree on. Uh, okay, before we finish the stream, I want all of you guys to tell us where we can find you and how to follow you and subscribe and all that stuff. Let's go from the top first. Inks, tell us about yourself. Uh, so I have a YouTube channel, Twitter, and Twitch. It's MMO Inks on all of those. So, uh, yeah, I cover... You know, I, co I cover mostly uh, news and uh, sort of guides for the general Guild Wars 2 game uh, on my YouTube channel. Okay. 
Nemesis? Um, I am mostly on YouTube for now. Uh, the channel is I am one and I am Legion and I mostly make guides for the Necromancer. I also sometimes do s like uh, balance checks and other things that are related to the in-depth core mechanics of the game. And I, I'm, I will awesome. be sometimes on Twitch on uh, slash I am one and I am Legion. Nice. Brazil? And then I am Brazil. You can find me on YouTube by searching Fat Neckbeard or just <laughs> Brazil DNT <laughs> or Little Fuckers. Those two. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'm Brazil from Death and Taxes, the Gilded. I make YouTube videos. I am on Twitch as well. I don't stream as much. I'm working on a new computer. Once that's done, I'll, sw I'll stream on Twitch at slash Brazil DNT. And you can find me on Twitter as well at Brazil DNT. And so that's that's about it for me. Excellent. <coughs> and of course, you're already on this channel, so if you want updates on when I do stuff like this, feel free to follow if you want to. You can follow me on Twitter to get announcements about what's coming up and also when the stream goes live at Mighty Teapot. Uh, and finally, I also have a YouTube channel where I do silly things and make up stuff about Guild Wars. Also, at Mighty Teapot, and that will conclude the stream. Uh, thank, all, thank you all of you for coming here and watching the show. I hope you very much enjoyed it, despite the weird internet issues. <laughs> uh, cheers, guys. Have a good one. Okay, there we go. We are no longer live. All right. <laughs> all right, well, I have got to get to work.